We are ready to start, Mr. Chairman. The ball is yours. All right. Good evening to all. Uh, are we ready for an opening statement, uh, Mr. May? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going, going at this time, I'm going to read a prepared statement. Uh, I am calling this November 4th, 2020 meeting of the Brockton Planning Board to order. My name is Bob Pelagi and I am chair of the board. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the governor's order suspending <laughs> certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, general law chapter 30A section 20 relating to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, the November 4th, 2020 public meeting of the Brockton Planning Board shall be physically closed to the public to avoid group congregation. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the board, to the planning board, utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record at the appropriate points in the meeting. For those of you joining us by phone who want to ask a question, press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of the recording and transcript will be posted to the city's webpage within 72 hours. All votes will, will be done via roll call to ensure count accuracy. Quorum call board members uh, quorum call. Board members, please respond in the affirmative to indicate your attendance at this meeting. Bob Pelagi, present. Craig Pina, present. Reggie Thomas is not at this meeting, is not in attendance. Tony <coughs> Gonzalez, here. And Larry Hassan, here. Okay, with four members voting in the affirmative, I declare that we have a quorum. Wonderful. Okay, so we have a rather extensive. Uh, Agenda for tonight, uh, we've got two ANRs, we've got nine agenda items, eight of which are actually public hearings. So I'll do my very best as chair to move this thing along so that we, so that it doesn't uh, consume the entire evening anyway. But the agenda for this, e for this evening's, I'm sorry? Are we good? Okay, so the agenda for this evening's meeting, Wednesday, November the 4th, 2020. Acceptance of the minutes of, uh, of 10 6 2020 endorsements of ANR plans, subdivision plans, and all lot releases. We have an ANR at 166 Fairview Avenue. We have an ANR at 56 Cherry Street. The nine agenda items are as follows permission to return to the Zoning Board of Appeals properties at 68 to 70 Field Street. The zoning denial was July the 14th, 2020. Applicant was Marie Lorquette, uh, with, uh, represented by attorney J uh, John Creedon. Second agenda items, permission to return to the Zoning Board of Appeals, property at 14 Battle Street. The denial was uh, November the 13th, uh, 2019. Applicant is Valentino Gomes, again represented by Attorney John Creedon. Item three, site plan approval, properties at 56 Oak Hill Way, commercial <coughs> edition. Applicant is Atlantic Mechanical, representative is Vertex. Four, site plan approval, property at 28 Petronelli Way. It's a proposed con uh, building conversion. Applicant is 28 Petronelli Way, LLC. Representative J.K. Holmgren Engineering. Five, site plan approval, property at 19-31 Main Street, proposed conversion. Applicant, new versions, a uh, new vision, Enterprises. Representative J.K. Holmgren Engineering. Six, preliminary subdivision, property 134 Armiston Street. It's a six lot residential subdivision. Uh, owner is Robert Kane, uh, represented by attorney James Burke. Seven, definitive subdivision, properties at 6, 678 East. <coughs> it is a two lot residential subdivision, or at least the portion that's in Brockton, apparently. Owner representative, uh, that's uh, Benjamin Carroll, represented by Munden Engineering. Item eight, definitive subdivision, property 135 Elliott Street. It's a three lot multi multi uh, residential project owner representative is jk holmgren uh, engineering and the ninth item is definitive subdivision properties at 21 union street it is a two lot uh, residential subdivision uh, that is jk holmgren uh, engineer so uh, for housekeeping items pam we've got uh, acceptance of the minutes of the meetings uh, the acceptance of the minutes of the 10 06 20 meeting. 
Uh, board yeah. members, please. Motion to accept the minutes as presented. I second that. Okay, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Okay, now we are going to do a roll call vote. Keep forgetting that. Okay, vote by roll call. Craig Pina? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Not here. Oh, I'm sorry, pardon me. Uh, Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Uh, Larry Hassan? Yes. Wonderful. So voted. Um, endorsements of ANRs. I see that we have a couple of ANRs. Um, uh, has everybody had a chance to look at those ANRs? They seem to be uh, straightforward. Any questions on the part of the board of the two ANRs, 166 Fairview Avenue or 56 Cherry Street? No questions. Motion to approve the uh, ANRs? We have to do them individually. Motion to approve uh, 166 Fairview Ave. Second? Second. Okay, roll call vote. Craig Pina? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Next is 56 Cherry Street. Uh, any comments on the part of the board? A motion, please. Make a motion to accept the ANR for 56 Cherry Street. A second. Se second. All right, roll call vote. Craig Pina? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Uh, anything else we have lot releases, Pam? You have three requests. It's that time of year. DP yeah. tries to close up the roads and um, everybody tries to get their utilities off. So um, I can do them all together. Um, 138 Collab was an existing home and a split. Now, this now I believe. Uh, pardon the interruption. I'm sorry. The, the lot releases need need to be voted, though. They, those need correct. Votes. Correct. Okay. But I can explain them all at in one at one time, and then you can vote. Okay. So 138 Collab. They're looking to release the existing house from Covenant and the new buildable lot. Um, utilities are off the street. And I received the letter from the DPW today, actually. Uh, yeah. Um, 107 and 111 Gale, Guild Road. Um, same thing, existing house and new lot. Utilities have been brought off the street for the new lot. Um, in both of those, there's no work being done to the existing houses. 496 North Cary Street, um, the letter is not in your digital file. It did come in about four o'clock from the DPW. Um, those houses have been renumbered because it was a numbering problem. So they're now 490 and 500 North Cary Street. Um, but utilities are off the street and inspected. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. May. A point of clarification. Can we take those collectively or do we need to vote on those individually? Um, I believe we can vote on those collectively. All right. Uh, well, just to refresh someone's memory, if they want to make a motion, there's 138. These are lot releases for 138 Kyle Avenue, 111 Guild Road, and 490 and 500 North Cary Street. Is that correct, Dan? Correct. A motion, please. Motion will accept the three lots collectively. You want to release? You mean release, release the lot lot all those lots? Yes. A second, please. Second. A motion has been made and seconded. Uh, a vote on the a vote on the roll call. Uh, Craig Pina. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Okay, moving right along. <coughs> All right, so the first agenda item is return to the Zoning Board of Appeals properties at 68 to 70 Field Street. The denial was July the 14th, 2020. The applicant is Marie Lorquette, uh, represented by John, Attorney John Creedon. This is a public hearing. Good evening, uh, Attorney Creedon. 
Uh, hang on just a second as I um, turn Mr. Creedon's mic on. Uh, if there's anyone else uh, here as an attendee who would like to speak on this case, uh, and it's uh, North Montello, uh, would you please raise your hand so I can turn on your microphone, please? Field Street. It's Field Street. I'm sorry, excuse me. Field Street. Well, it's it front. Yes, 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 sir. All right, Mr. Creedon. Attorney Creighton, you're on mute at the moment. I can't unmute him. There he goes. Nope. Is he elected not to be live on video? Oh, yep, there I'm he is. I can hear him. There he is. I can hear him. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Again, with your busy agenda, Attorney Jake Creedon, uh, Legion Parkway, Brockton. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I know that I have petitioned to get back to the Zoning Board of Appeals, so I'm going to ask the board this evening to do something a little different, and that is because uh, based on the <clears throat> zoning decision that we received, um, and I think the only member that rem would remember this would be member uh, Pena. Um, <clears throat> we, it's the old Max's Den up on Field Street. And we chose, uh, my client uh, Marie Loquette and her husband chose to expand that from uh, 90, I believe 96 seats up to 129. That, that required an additional eight spaces from the plans that we had filed. Um, the decision basis was that because it's such a, it's been a problem in the past with on-street parking for the neighbors, um, that they felt it was not a good idea to allow the variance for eight spaces. I indicated to them and proceeded to give them a lease situation that I have on a significant lot with <coughs> additional spaces. Uh, which is about 500 feet away on North Montello Street. Um, again, it's a C2 zone. Uh, since this July 14th hearing, we no longer need, because for years and years and years from the Montello Garden up through Max's Den, it has been a restaurant and a, and a, and a bar room. And uh, so no longer is a special permit needed. However, in my research and talking with my engineers, of which there are many, um, I realized that we really should be going to site review first. So what I'm asking, I could go on and on, uh, but I, I'm, I'm certain, and I have discussed this with some members of, uh, in the planning department, I have to go to site review. So I'm, what I'm requesting of you this evening is either to table this situation or take no action so that I can file and go for site review and then appear back before you to try to get the approval of that now vacant lot, um, uh, which has an addition, will have an additional 35 spaces. I can tell you that the chairman of the zoning board indicated to me to file with the planning board because there would be no need to go back to the zoning board if the planning board in your uh, uh, permit granting authority which you have under the uh, city ordinances 27 to 86, you would be the fi final permit grant, uh, granting authority. So that's what I'm asking. Uh, again, uh, there, you do have in your packet, I believe, what the uh, parking plan looks like. I'm going to have to file a certified and dated and signed one of that uh, officially and go to the site review, which I probably won't take place till late November or December. Okay. So again, I'm asking you not to uh, either take no action tonight or table it until I've gone through the site, uh, the site review plan. Mr. Mr. Chair, um, and, and, and in respect to the, our discussion at the ZBA and everything that went on around this prop, this, uh, this project, um, I, I would, I would ex propose that we forgo any conversation and uh, continue this discussion 
until they until they've been through site plan review. And uh, I would just propose that we, I, I make a proposal got, that we table this or continue. Hey, I've got a very unusual situation. Someone is pounding the heck out of my front door and I'm alone here. So I got to excuse myself for about 30 seconds. I'll be right back. All right. Um, <laughs> I, I think that's a good good suggestion while we wait for the Mr. Chairman to come back. Um, how long do you need so we can have an answer for him when he returns? To the next meeting, two months? Attorney He's, Creighton, how, how do we do we continue this to next meeting or well it depends. Um, I have to go before yeah, I have to go through site review. So whenever those deadlines that I have talked with the planning office and it's likely that by the time we get through site planning, the earliest would be back before you will be the January meeting, not December. All right, so my, my motion will be to continue to uh, January. And I'll second that. We'll just wait for Mr. Chairman to return. Yes, please. It does require all four of you to vote. Yeah. Because it's a return. Well, if if they're voting to, oh, to table uh, it, no, then. continue it. Yeah, it does. Right, matter. it's simple majority. I love that picture behind you, Ed. Is it a museum, Mel? It's muted. Yeah, he's muted. He's sitting outside, and it's still sunny out in his more, in that part of Rockville. <laughs> yeah, more he's right up the street. And look muted. how sunny it is. Well, and has a new no one can see how day. dirty my office is and how many stacks of paper <laughs> I really have. <laughs> but Ed, you, Ed, you have a new picture every day. That's right. <laughs> All right. That was a long pizza delivery. Okay, I apologize for that. <laughs> it's the Brockton police that are trying to save me. My uh, my 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 motion is to continue uh, this until the January meeting. Okay, and that would make sense given the fact that uh, he doesn't really need to go back to the VA, <laughs> and he does understand that he needs to do a complete. He's got to do a complete site plan, which it would include, if I'm understanding the petition correctly, he's got to do a complete site plan that would include a valid uh, lease for parking and also a, a an accompanying plan that demonstrates where the parking is. <coughs> I believe, Attorney Creed, you're, 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 you're clear with that, right? Yes, I am. Okay, Mr. thank you. Chairman, now, yes. question, question for Mr. May. Procedurally, this is a public hearing where we would invite input from the public. But if, if, if Mr. Creedon is comfortable with continuing, uh, what was the motion to continue, Craig? Continue to January. Okay. Yes. Then do we need to invite the public or not? Uh, we can invite the public, um, uh, and and uh, if that is your your pleasure, or we can wait until January if anybody has uh, something to say. <laughs> Well, why don't we, so, it may not be anybody on, we can quickly go through that if, if, it's, if it's procedurally correct. Sure thing. All so right. If there's anyone who would like to speak about uh, this application, please raise their hand so I can uh, unlock them or unlock their mic in Zoom. Mr. Chairman, I do not see anyone making that request. Wonderful. Okay, so there's been a there's been a motion made to continue this agenda item to January. Is I'll second, second that. I'm sorry. I'll second it. Oh, second. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Craig Pina. Yes. Uh, Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Okay. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you. 
All right, so moving along here. Okay, so second agenda item is a return. Thank you. Good the evening again, Mr. Chairman. Are you ready for my? Yeah, just to, to announce the yes. agenda item is a. Commissioner returned to the Zoning Board of Appeals property at 14 Battle Street. The denial was November the 13th, 2019. The applicant is Valentino Gomes, again represented by Attorney Creedon. Good evening, Attorney Creedon. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Chairman. Your uh, video went out. Uh, video went out. Yeah, that's good. Mr. Uh, the Chairman, Falashi. I'm sorry, say it again. Oh, your, your video is, is off. There we go. Oh, yeah, right, there you are. Yeah. Sorry. Yep, there it is. Mr. Creighton, please proceed. Thank you. Um, this re request is to return to the, the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'll give you a quick history as I can. The denial uh, was uh, a unanimous denial back on uh, November 13th, uh, 2019, just about a year ago. Um, I can tell you the reason being in the substantial changes, the decision indicated uh, kind of two concerns. One was that there was a fifth bedroom being added to what was already approved in 218 to redo the house that was burned down there. So it's not like there's not gonna be a house there. There's definitely gonna be a house there, but we went in with a fifth bedroom. It happened to be below grade and we were using what they call um, fire escape situations that uh, are, are below grade. We presented, and I think you have in your package, what was the, uh, what was the, what it looked like. And it looked like, uh, if you will, that it was something that was, uh, for want of a better word, like a bump out, okay? In fact, the egress window uh, material change is that there'll be no uh, bump out. Everything is done interior that um, I believe in your packet there, uh, you know, this, I sent some materials that indicated <coughs> the law that egress window, as long as you and the city building inspector uh, approves the, uh, the requirements of uh, the openings, uh, the egress windows, the height, uh, and you've got that in front of you, I believe the minimum egress openings and the percentages uh, of the total floor area all of that, um, I believe, with the new proposal that we are going to ma make, uh, if, we're, if we're allowed to return to the zoning board, would be that situation. Um, again, what triggered all of this was our, my client's attempt to uh, put a fifth bedroom in there. It'll all be family occupied by himself, his wife, his uh, daughter, uh, his son, uh, and uh, I think the mother-in-law. So. There was a need at the time we refiled uh, uh, with this new um, egress window that that the the actually the two the two chiefs on the zoning board weren't comfortable with. We are coming back with a total different design that is something that is legal, acceptable, <coughs> we believe. And if I've given the opportunity to present that to them with the new regulations and stuff, that there is a likelihood that it could be allowed. So I'm asking for a, uh, a vote to return to the board so that I can make that presentation. But to be clear, Attorney Creedon, um, I'm looking at the package of plans there and I see on sheet, on your architectural sheet, A4 and A5, uh, the, the uh, architect makes reference to fire escape uh, rescue opening. Is that what you're referring to? It says fire uh, yeah, escape, rescue opening on A4 and A5 on, on, on several windows there. Yes. Yep. A4 and A5. Yes. Okay. And those, again, do not bump out. They, all the uh, construction is interior. And um, you can either, I, be, I believe, according to the regulation, they can either be uh, step stones or they can be wood but they got to be approved obviously by the building department after they review it. And they have to be within, they have to be so many inches within, the sill has to be within so many inches of finished grade. Yes. 
there's actually probably seven or eight requirements. I think I did give you um, an egress window requirement situation that explains them. All right. Um, does that conclude uh, your presentation, uh, Councillor? Yeah, I believe other than that, as I said, th this was approved. It was, Mr. Um, Mr. Gomes, who's here with me, incidentally, in my law office, um, again, the house burnt down. We went in a few times to the zoning board. We were allowed to rebuild on the existing foundation. Uh, we were then uh, asked to level the place. We did it. We filled it in, came back, and got approval for uh, to rebuild the house. But it, it, between that time, my client, with his family situation, needed a fifth bedroom. So John Spink, who is the engineer and is still the engineer in this situation, had that original uh, window opening, and now it's, it's, it's flush with the building, the foundation. So I'd like to have the ability to go back before the board to see if that's acceptable uh, with the members of the zoning board. My, uh, my, my opinion would be that this is, this is a su substantial, I remember this very clearly, this is a su substantial change because the actual egresses were the major concern and, um, you know, at making them not as far as a bump out uh, as they were before would be a substantial change and I would recommend a uh, return to ZBA. Right. I, um, I'll make that proposal. All right. That motion. Okay. But before, all right, that was, thank you for that. Any other, any other board members with any other comment? No. Okay. This being a public hearing, um, we would invite uh, any any of the public to speak either in favor or, or, or opposed to returning back to the zoning board. Do you see any, Mr. May? Uh, anybody who is interested in speaking on this issue, please raise your hand so I can unmute your microphone. And what is the address of the property? I, I, I beg your pardon? It is 14 Battles. 14 Battles. 14 Battles. I don't see anyone raising their hand to speak. Um, I didn't know if um, uh, Deputy Chief Williams would like to say something. Yeah. I also have something, but I'll let him go, go first. Thank you. Um, I looked at the plans and they do appear to meet code. That would be caught at the building department level all before the building permit was issued. The building department and myself would review the plans and not let it go. Didn't have the correct access, so you should be all set. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would like to share my screen, if I may. Certainly. Uh, this is a copy of the uh, zoning board's denial. It is in your file. Um, the the main reason, and I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Pina. The uh, main reason uh, that they state is that the petitioner failed to produce, provide sufficient documents for the board uh, and that there was no site plan submitted with the application. The board then expressed interest uh, or concern about the, the fire plan, um, but uh, their decision shows that um, failure to uh, provide a site plan was one of their uh, major issues. And I do want to point out that in this application, there is not a site plan. So with that in mind, uh, the board can, you know, decide whether that is, they've made a sufficient modification. How? So I'll make a motion to return to zoning plan, zoning board of appeals with the site plan. Attorney Creighton, do we have do we have a sufficient site plan right now? Yes, there is. Um, and I believe I put there. There is a number, as as you as I think, Mr. Chairman indicated. There's there's a number of plans there, and with it, on the refiling, uh, if allowed to go back to the zoning board, we will right. uh, put an actual uh, site plan redone that's been redone. Uh, with the filing. I'll second the motion. Okay. 
All right, there's been a motion made and seconded to uh, return to the zoning board with the, with the revised architectural plans, again, with the understanding that he will need a certified site plan to, um, I don't know how to get that done, but he'll need a certified site plan to get uh, to file with it. But um, so there's been a, a motion made and seconded to, to return to the zoning board. Um, all right, uh, roll call vote. Craig Pina? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you, members of the board. Um, can I ask who's BCA on the on in the meeting here with the camera off? They're recording Boston community access. Cable. Oh. Oh. You're on TV. Smile oh. you can't camera. Hello, BCA. <laughs> I should have known that. Okay. Uh, agenda item number three. Okay. Is uh, site plan approval 56 Oak Hill Way? It's a commercial addition. An applicant is Atlantic Mechanical, representative is Vertex. Um, yeah, there he is. I think he's got his hand up, too. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to double multitask, and I wasn't multitasking fast enough. I believe it's Andre. It's Andrew. Good oh, Andrew. Excuse Good me. evening. Andrew Shagnon from Vertex. Um, am, I, am I going to be able to share my screen and present? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I need to promote you to panelist. So you're being promoted. Congratulations. Should be able to share your screen now. Sorry about that. That kicked me out and just let me back, let me back in. I will, um, let me share my screen here. Uh, I have a quick, Quick presentation um, that I have prepared, which I will which I will share with you. Uh, can everybody? Uh, hang on a second. I think I'm sharing the wrong screen. Can everybody see the presentation? Yes, That's I can. Perfect. Perfect. So I prepared just a quick agenda on the side. I'll go through some quick introductions, the location of the, the project, uh, existing conditions, proposed conditions. I'll talk a little bit about the design, specifically the drainage and wetlands. Um, go over the comments we received at the uh, Technical Review Committee and then take any questions and comments. Uh, my name is Andrew Shagnon. I work for the Vertex companies. I'm a licensed engineer in the state of Massachusetts. I do believe that I also have with me uh, Joe Grauta from Atlantic Mechanical. Uh, I am here presenting uh, Atlantic Mechanical on a project that they are proposing at 56 Oak Hill Way. Um, Joe, would you raise your hand so I can unmute your microphone? There it is. Uh, there I go. believe. I believe that everybody probably knows where the site is, but uh, just to get it on record, as you can see in the, the presentation, uh, site location is located on Oak, Oak Hill Way, the southern part of the city. Uh, adjacent, uh, Oak Hill Way is adjacent and parallel to Main Street. Um, the existing lot is a little over about a 4.15 acre lot, it has an existing um, warehouse building that's on it. Uh, the building is approximately 105,000 square feet. Um, to the north of the building, which is, is to the left of your screen, if you can see my cursor, there is parking available for um, passenger vehicles. 
along the west face of the building, uh, there are seven loading docks where trucks can drop off and pick up merchandise um, from, the, from the facility. Uh, as we head down to the south, you can see off property to the south, um, there is a detention pond, which is right here in, this, in, the, in the corner here, as well as um, some wetlands, which are depicted by the, the blue on your screen. Uh, the proposal for the project is a 10,000 square foot uh, building on the south side of the, the existing building. Uh, the use of the addition is actually a refrigerated building to restore to store refrigerated goods. Um, you can see it depicted on the plan right here. Um, with the addition of that, there really is no significant change to operation of the site, um, with one exception. We'll still continue to have um, the passenger vehicles to the north, uh, loading docks with deliveries and um, pickups will happen on the west face. Um, the really only significant change that will, that will happen here from an operational point of view, if you can see on the aerial that's here, there's a number. Sorry. Sorry, I thought I heard some somebody speak up. Um, uh, you can see on this aerial that there are a number of trucks that are stored on the site. And the reason why these trucks are needed to be stored on the site is because there's actually refrigerated goods in those trucks. So the only real significant change in operation to the site once uh, the addition is added is that those trucks will no longer, certainly not in the numbers that they are now, will need to be stored on site because the refrigerated goods will be actually inside, um, inside the addition. Uh, the, the addition really is going to be carved out. It's really just going to be cut into the existing pavement that's here. Uh, the area where it's being added is already uh, pavement. That pavement will be removed and the addition added. Uh, we are not disturbing any of the rest of the, uh, the site or any of the offsite areas. Um, do you have these light kind of brown areas that you see to the uh, east and the west of the existing building are proposed to be gravel and that's just really to stabilize the areas um, around the addition. Uh, getting into uh, just a little bit a little bit more detail, um, the addition will have uh, new roof drains which will come out of it, a new six inch pipe which will come out and discharge into that existing detention basin that I spoke about before. There is an exi two existing uh, catch basins for inlets. One right here that will that now falls within the footprint of the building uh, and one right here that's outside the footprint of the building. The one that's inside the footprint of the building will be relocated outside the footprint. As I mentioned, there's no, uh, no intent to modify any of the other uh, paving in this area. So these catch basins will still pick up the stormwater um, as they do today. As I mentioned previously, there are wetlands to the south you can see the 100 foot buffer zone, which comes through the existing, the existing building here. Uh, we did present this, uh, uh, submit this to the Conservation Commission. I uh, had some correspondence back and forth with them as well as a hearing. Uh, they did approve this on July 31st and or, uh, issue in order of conditions under project, uh, project number 1180760. Uh, after that, we submitted to the planning board. Subsequent to our submission, uh, we did have a technical review committee meeting on September 28th at 9 a.m. There were a, a number of issues that were brought up at that meeting. Um, we were able to answer and respond to some of those uh, prior to this meeting, uh, and I believe any of the ones that we weren't, I do have responses to this evening. Um, I will just run through um, these real quickly, and I'm going to just back up to a, a previous slide so that we can have something to look at while, while we're talking about it. Um, the first three comments came from the, from the fire department. Uh, their first qu uh, comment or question was, would there be a bi-directional amplifier um, as required by the fire department? I have uh, been able to confirm with my client that yes, they are um, willing to include this in the project uh, as part of the addition. Um, the fire department also asked okay if we could confirm whether the addition is sprinklered and how that, whether it would be fed by a new line or the existing line. Uh, and I was able to confirm with my client that it will be sprinkled, but it will, and it will be fed from the existing fire line that already goes into the building. Um, there was a request for us to show truck and vehicular parking configurations. Uh, as I mentioned, um, with the addition of this, uh, 
refrigerated portion of the warehouse, we will no longer need to have all these trucks uh, parked on site as we, as we did before. Loading docks, which are located here, will continue to be used. Um, and passenger vehicles, as I mentioned before, will continue to be to the, to the north end of the building. Uh, the next question came from the planning department. They wanted to know what agreement or easement is in place that allows for access and parking. We use uh, this off-site area, which you can see to the south. Uh, I've verified with my client that they're not aware of any agreement that is in place. And uh, as I have mentioned, uh, certainly with the addition of this building, there will not be any need uh, to additionally to, uh, to continue to have any parking or any trucks on that, on that parcel. Mr. Andrew? Sure. Pardon the interruption. I, that's a, that's a, uh, on that point that you just made. So you're saying that the, the functioning of this, of this, the existing building along with the proposed addition is not dependent on any, on any of the features that are on that parcel to the south of you? That, that uh, parcel 118 minus 157, what the parcel that's in the control of the city of Rockton now? Uh, I would not. I would not say exactly exactly that, uh, Mr. Chairman. I what I would repeat is that we, it will not be needed for any uh, parking or any vehicles to be on it. There is, in fact, and uh, one of the one of the um, questions that I was going to get to in a moment that was brought up by engineering is what allows for the drainage to be on that lot. And there is, in fact, uh, a agreement that allows for there's an easement that allows for that drainage to be there the the tension basin as well as the the pipes that go to it um that was a question that was asked by engineering and that easement has been produced and provided to the uh as part of, as part of our application okay but the but as far as uh, just to be clear now this because that's important as far as the the indicated snow the snow storage area and the in the five Five existing parking spaces. Your proposed site plan uh, operates independently from the from those from those physical features that are shown on the plan. In other words, if there was a someone erected a fence right on that divisional shopping line, your your proposal, your existing building with its proposed addition, isn't dependent on those physical features. That is my that is my understanding. Correct. We're not we're not, and I want to be clear. I don't think we were, let me just go back a little bit to the existing condition. Uh, I don't believe that we were proposing any new parking spaces on this site. There is some existing parking spaces within the existing paved area here. We were not proposing to add any, any, any spots here. You know, practically, I think the snow storage does happen where it happens. That way, any snow melt goes into that detention basin. Certainly, if uh, a fence were erected across there, then then snow storage would not be able to happen there, and it would need to happen elsewhere on site. As you can see, uh, there is there is you know a fair amount of space on site. If you look to the to the north parking lot, uh, as well as along some of the perimeter of the site here, where they would be able to st uh, store s um, snow. Okay, I mean I okay, I didn't mean to interrupt your presentation. Nope. I, I not at all. Not 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 at all. Uh, I do have yeah. some other comments and concerns, but if you if you would like to finish, that's fine. Sure. Um, so again, there was there was three uh, comments from engineering. Um, the first one actually was exactly that question about the detention, and as I mentioned, uh, and drainage. As I mentioned, there is an easement, and that has been that has been provided. Um, there was a question about showing a, a proposed grading around here, and I think there may have been a misunderstanding. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we're not planning to touch any of the 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 um, asphalt outside of the um, outside of the footprint of the building except for just you know some gravel for stabilization so that the entire site is planned to continue to drain exactly as it does and be graded exactly as it does except for the building itself which uh, the roof uh, as I mentioned previously the roof is picked up by roof drains and discharge into the, the detention basin um, Thirdly, there was some question about the alignment of the um, of the drainage. We had a previous iteration of this plan, which uh, did not discharge perpendicular into the detention basin. Uh, engineering had a concern that that might cause some erosion, uh, and they also had a question about the size of the pipe coming from the from the addition. And the size of the pipe is six inches, and we did reconfigure that uh, inlet into the detention basin. 
to be perpendicular uh, to the side of the basin to avoid any of those any of those erosion concerns that were brought up. Um, there was a, a comment uh, or question presented by a councilwoman. She asked if uh, the site would consider any kind of beautification uh, along with the addition. Uh, my client has verified that uh, they do intend uh, in fact to actually paint the front of the existing building, uh, this west facing um, side of the building along with the addition. So there would be some beautification uh, done to the building as part of the addition. Uh, and lastly, conservation brought up the fact that within their conditions, uh, that a number of things couldn't be done until after the addition uh, was put up, but there was some things uh, that could be done beforehand. And I think that they were specifically talking about planting. Uh, I have verified with my client uh, that the plants that are required as part of the order of conditions have been ordered. Uh, and will be delivered to the site and will actually, in fact, be planted uh, shortly this fall. Uh, with that, I am uh, really done with the presentation portion um, of, the, uh, of my presentation, and I'd be more than happy to uh, try to answer any questions or field any comments that you, that you have. Okay. Uh, board members, does anybody have a comment? My, so this is strictly just a refrigerated area? That is correct. That is that is correct. And there, there are no uh, loading docks or anything that are going to be added on. There is not. There's currently seven loading docks in the in the on the west facing um, uh, face of this building, and those are intended to continue to be the, used as the loading docks. And it, and it looks like on the plane, you're not really adding very much impervious area uh, to the footprint of the of the building, including the, the paved areas. Correct. Yeah. The, the, so there's a the the building footprint is an increase of 10,000 square feet. We in fact actually have a reduction uh, of around just under 500 square feet of impervious total for total for the site. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else with a comment or a concern? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Um, sorry, the trucks I was talking about, I understand they have the refrigerated tractor trailers out there right now that are mimicking the addition that you're going to be putting on, but they do have a fleet of 20 to 30 box trucks, like 24 footers, that they actually use to deliver food to the supermarket and uh, restaurants they service. And that's the parking plan I'm looking for. And one of the concerns I have is the refueled on site. So we just want to make sure that the refueling is protected um, from uh, the wetlands area. Where is it? How do you, how do you provide refueling, Andrew? How do you perform that? So I'm going to, uh, I, so my understanding is, and, and I'll just give you briefly, my understanding is that any of that parking or refueling would now happen in front of the building here, but uh, I, I would just, uh, if Mr. Grada has anything that he would want to add to that, I just want to make sure that he has the opportunity. Yeah, that's my understanding as well. I, I think that uh, it's, it's not going to take place anywhere near the wetland section. I'm not sure that the uh, Conservation Commission was aware that there was any refueling oh, there weren't. going on there. I think that's a major, I mean, I think that's a major concern. I'm not suggesting that it isn't done outside of regulation or that it's done improperly, but that's something that needs to be at least at least highlighted, or I would say at least recognized by CONCOM. I mean, how you're doing it, in other words, the methods that you're using, um, assuming that your methods that you're using uh, meet uh, all, 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 all codes and guidances, I mean, I think that um, someone, someone should be uh, maybe made aware of that. I mean, was that something, Pam or Rob, that maybe Megan could address? Or would that have yes. to, what? Y yes, we'll, we'll make her aware of that. Yeah. And right. Mr. Chairman, just so you realize, the method that they use is basically an oil truck pulls up and they're permitted by the fire department to do so. And they, the oil truck takes the hose off the truck and goes from truck to truck, filling up the trucks with diesel fuel. So it's not, it's not, any more sophisticated than that so they're not oh, storing they're not storing fuel on site or anything they're not it's just uh in the trucks itself 
uh, but the oil comes out and now you up the trucks. Um, so, well, I, Chief, your audio is cutting in and out, at least at my station here, but is, is there Mr. any- Pilot, is there Mr. Any, Chairman? I'm sorry? Mr. Chairman, I think that, that um, given that this is, this is new knowledge uh, about the fueling system, I do not know if you have plans in your um, uh, presentation that show how the water or any spill might be contained on the site. Um, if there are any um, stormwater drains in that area, I'm, I'm concerned about, you know, somebody slipping and, and having a, a, a fuel spill that, that pours into the uh, storm drain and then into the wetlands without being separated out. Yeah, yeah I, do, I, I do not have anything like that with me. I was not, a, not aware that it was an issue. You know, this is an ongoing operation that has been happening here for quite some time. Uh, I believe that they have all the appropriate permits in place to do what they're doing. I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to revisit it, but uh, I believe that they comply with all the regulations that they need to for any refueling on site. Would and again, I, I again, it's out, outside of my scope of knowledge. But would a would a visit, assuming that this project moves along, would a visit with uh, Megan to discuss this? this topic be satisfactory or does it hopefully it doesn't need to refile a notice of intent or a modified notice of intent? I, I think it's necessary. I'm For sorry? my understanding this is something that's going on and is permitted right now. It's a truck that goes to these diesel powered uh, refrigerated trucks and uh, as opposed to having a concrete pad and having them drive up to a concrete pad they're they're being refueled in place right now because they're diesel powered refrigerated trucks and a lot of times they're stationary. So what is, what is the difference between adding a refrigerated addition onto the building and no additional loading docks to what they propose? I don't see any change in operations well, other than I, that. I, I think the, the, the issue is um, that uh, <coughs> while they have a permit to transfer fuel from the fire department, that does not necessarily mean that the stormwater systems have been thoroughly vetted. Uh, if you go to a, a gas station now to fill up your car, you notice that there is a um, uh, physical uh, improvements. To I, the I, I, I understand that, that but, but, from, that but from, from, from what I'm seeing, there is no place where outside of the wetlands, well, actually no, even in, within the, the 100 foot bit, the 100 foot uh, zone, there is no there's no room for refueling. So it's all going to be done in front, and it's outside of the 100 foot barrier. Um, I don't understand. It, it is out. It is outside the 100 foot barrier, but I don't know, and we don't know, if there are any stormwater control devices there that then. Um, That's the concern. Yeah. That's a concern. In other words, you could have Craig. You could have, you could have catch basins or something of that nature that's outside the hundred foot buffer zone that takes surface water, takes sheet flow from that park paved area, and takes it into the wetlands. And if you've got spills, if you've got spills so, on so, that page, so basically it's we're, we're we're reconsidering something that's permitted now and putting them through an, an additional permitting process. Okay. Well, I, I think that, I that, thought that's my concern. No, it's a fair question. I, I thought it was worth an ask. I, I'm not saying we need to go through to a full-blown uh, 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 notice of intent concom filing, but I thought it was. I have to agree with Mr. May. I think it's certainly worth um, uh, to get to address it and get an answer to it. And I have a concern of a little different nature. I I have a question for Andrew. Um, Mr. So, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, could I just address that concern before we move on about yes, the, the refueling yes, stormwater? Uh, you know, again, I'd like to reiterate, it, it's an ongoing operation that has been previously permitted uh, in the city. We think that uh, it's being done appropriately. I'd be happy um, to coordinate back with your board just on an informational purpose to verify. I don't believe that there's any stormwater inlets in front of the building that, that, that fuel can get into. I believe that the fuel provider uh, you know, is required to operate under a certain permit and a certain 
set of uh, rules and regulations that include spill kits and those type of things so to make sure that they're doing things within uh, within uh, their purview. I'd be happy to, again, for informational purposes, coordinate back with your board as well as the Conservation Commission to, to provide to provide that information, even though I, I think that it's a, 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 a permitted allowable use outside of the Conservation Commission's uh, 100 foot jurisdiction. I'm more than happy to provide provide the information. Yep, that would be if you if you would, and I'm uh, I I'll take you up on your offer if you would provide that information to um, our our concon representative would be Megan Shave. I believe. Well, uh, and, and Mr. Chairman, we would also want Chike, the city engineer, to take a look at this. Yeah, because I I know he doesn't know about this. So. The, Thank you for that. And then the two concerns I had, Andrew, was that um, is there a parking table on the plan, set of plans that we've submitted for this evening? Is there a parking table on it? I believe, I, I believe, I believe that there is. It, it indicates that there's uh, parking required is 38 spaces plus two handicap uh, and that they're existing. There's 57 spaces plus two handicap. Um, also uh, that there is currently uh, seven loading bays provided okay uh so yeah. i was looking into the refueling issue uh this is joe from atlantic mechanical uh and the only refueling that was taking place at that site is for the temporary refrigeration that's taking place out front so by adding the addition there won't be any need for ongoing uh refueling okay. so it will actually discontinue it altogether oh all right that's oh, okay because it's okay. not for the delivery vehicles, it's for the, the diesel engines that run the refrigeration. All so right. there will be no need for any more, any refueling at all? Whatever. Because, be, be, well, there's no need for the refueling because you're building a refrigerated addition. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> okay. It's my understanding that they're doing the delivery vehicles and not so much the refrigeration units. Okay. But pull the permit in the morning and get it to Megan. Um, in our code, there's really nothing that talks about wetlands, but it brings up a good point. I never realized we had that amount of wetlands right next door there. So I think, I'm I think gonna the, have I think, a, I think a the point dive is all moot. I think the point is moot if they're, ref, if they're only refueling the diesel refrigeration units when they add the refrigerated addition on. I think the point is moot. No, but that's incorrect. They're refueling the delivery trucks, Craig. Can I ask, um, Mr. Grada, are you ref refueling delivery vehicles? Did we lose them? Hold on. My, my understanding was that they were not, but look, I, I can double check that right now. If you want to give me just about two minutes, uh, I can get my, uh, my hands on them and find out very quickly. Sure, thank you. Mr. Chairman? Um, rather confirm, so. Sorry, Joe, please repeat that. He's gonna check, get back to us. Mr. Chairman, I think you had a, you had a second issue in addition, to the, in addition to the parking. Yeah, so, okay, so you've demonstrated that you don't, even though you've got five parking spaces, you're showing five parking spaces offsite, you've demonstrated in your parking table that you don't need those. Did Correct. You, you Correct. Okay, I, now, I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't believe that we included those in the, in the count. I can check that. But even had we included those in the count, we're well over what the, what the requirements are. It would appear so. And then the other concern I have is that you're showing the snow storage area. Uh, it's a small matter, but I, I, would, I would appreciate if you could relocate uh, a, a, a proposed storage area on your own site and, and just revise that on the plan, if you would, please. Absolutely. In other words, we want it, you know, I don't want you to be showing any dependency on that city of Brockton property. If you're using it, uh, you do it at your own peril, but I don't want you to demonstrate any, any dependency on that site regarding this project. Understood. Think there's also a storage here, a, a storage. I'm sorry? I think they're also proposing some um, storage for- um, It says no, no storage? Yeah, but if you look, there's also a, either, it's not their lay down area, I think it's, there's another area there that they're gonna need to remove off. Uh, I don't, well, and, I, I, let, let me address that just a second. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If, if I may ask, um, 
you the the new addition is very close to the property line um and um while i'm all in favor of equal opportunity i don't think that there are that many skinny construction workers and um at at, at some point in time the um uh, the building of that of that addition is going to stray onto what is now city property. It was taken by uh, uh, tax title. Uh, I would hope that um, the board would make it a condition of their approval that they negotiate an easement with the city of Brockton um, so that they can access that during construction. It's, it's going to be very hard to build without it. Um, and that um, in exchange for that easement that the city would um, accept the uh, removal of the asphalt and then uh, regrading seating and loaming and seating of what is now an unneeded parking area. In snow storage. Correct, sir. Uh, are you are you are you uh, are you in agreement with that, uh, Andrew? No, it's, I think we're going to need I think we're going to need to wait until Joe gets back on the lawn. Not something that I'm uh, in a position that I can commit to that. Uh, I would, you know, at, at least ask ask that the the board recognize um, that you know there is some ad, ad, uh, advantage to being able to access around the side of that building for example from a point of firefighting as well as there's going to need to be access to that detention pond for uh maintenance activities and those those type of things so uh, I, I would just ask any modifications that are made to this lot take those things into consider take those things into consideration and again not something that i can commit to really something that uh, either either uh, Joe or somebody else on behalf of the owner is going to have to commit to. Andrew, do you know what the do you know what the offset of that proposed addition is off the lot line? I do. I do. It is. Uh, I, oh, hold on a second. I got it right here someplace. It is 6.8 feet. Right in the zoning table, which uh, is um, on sheet. Um, Hang on, I'll tell you exactly what sheet that is on in your package. The zoning table is provided on sheet 2.0. It's in the upper left-hand corner of the sheet. Yep. Uh, you can see that all the dimensional requirements are there. There is no uh, side yard setback uh, in this in this zone, and we're providing 6.8 feet from the property line. Yeah, you're not required any. Correct. Pam, Pam, did you mention Pam? You mentioned some other storage area. What was that? Do you recall what? It yeah, was? they they have some kind of a construction area there. Look in the area of the snow storage. Of the what? Of the snow storage. Pam, do you know what, which plan that that is on? I'm looking at sheet C uh, two point oh. My the one you sent today. Yeah, and I, I apologize for not knowing off the top of my head. I don't know if there was any construction laid down planned in this area. I don't recall that there was anything anything like that on the plans. I can I can certainly verify that. In the front, I, I know that on on the plans that we submitted to you. Uh, C 3.0. We actually call for the temporary staging area to happen in front of the in front of the existing building. Um, there is something called a temporary soil soil stockpile area. Oh, that's probably that, it. That, that's yeah. located again. It's just located outside of the uh, the detention basin, so that if in case there was any runoff, it would be captured by the detention basin and not get it not get into the wetlands. Let me. Uh, let me do this real quick. Um, I'm going to just switch what screen I'm sharing here. This is on your C3.0. Oh, I believe everybody should be able to see that now. I think, Pam, this is what you're talking about, where yeah. it's a temporary soil stockpile area. 
the detail here again located in this area area very specifically so that uh, although it's required to be stabilized if there were any runoff that that would happen into the detention basin and could be cleaned up as opposed to someplace else where it might get into the into the wetlands or out into the right of way what happens if what happens if i don't know what happens if the city the city has a right to fence that property what happens if they if they fence that property line if the, if the board thinks it's an issue I'm, I'm i'm happy to remove the temporary soil stockpile area from there and put it someplace else on the site all right we're, we're trying to get you to be we want you to at least on the on the on the site plan set to be to be totally independent from from that city i don't mean to persist with this but to be independent from that city on property so Underst understood so if you could do whatever it takes to relocate it and i understand it makes good sense what you're saying about the, about your positioning of the snow storage area it makes good sense but um, if you could just re relocate someplace on the site as far as mr may's suggestion about uh taking up all of that paving i don't know i mean i don't know i mean i, 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 I was, again i i, I I'd like an opportunity to, to, you know, present that to my client and just let them make them aware that it, 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 if, if it is the board's position that they cannot access that site without, uh, for construction, I mean, they have, as far as the drainage goes, they have a easement where they're allowed to go on there and maintain the drainage. So I think any of the drainage work is, is already covered by their easement. Uh, if it's yeah. the board's, if it's the board's position that any work associated with the, the building itself, uh, if they are going to access on that property, they would need an easement and they would need to negotiate the terms of those easements with the city. I, I would pass that information along to my client. Sure. Well, Mr. May, how, how, uh, how big an item is that to you? I mean, as far as removing, removing that, all of that paved area from the property line south. Well, the only reason that we own that property is that the, client didn't pay taxes on it um and the city took it for uh, uh foreclosed on it yep. so i i think it's an issue is that are we talking the same entity or are we talking to someone different because we, we can't hold someone hostage for someone else's not paying in taxes I, I think his point is that the city owns it now, so. I think it was. I think but it there, was there the is, same. There I, is I, no there is no requirement for a side yard setback in this area, so I don't see the issue. And unless 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 it's done, they, 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 required to to ask for um, a maintenance easement, I don't see. I don't really see the issue. He can build close to the property line, whether that's he. That's not a problem. Use the. The city property to access his property is something else. He can build his building that close, but he has to be able to build his building on his side of the property. All right, so so a, a 15 foot maintenance easement is the answer. Is that what you're saying? Y yes, it is. All right. I mean that's easy. That may be easier said than done. Are you are you suggesting that that the approval of the site plan is conditioned on the acquisition of a 15 foot uh, access easement obtained from the city? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, uh, other... uh, along with you know the conversation with the conservation and Chike about the refu refueling but if there's no refueling going on other than yeah i think the refuel i think required it if i'm understanding the correctly i think i think that the that the that the construction of the addition quiets the refueling concern am i saying that correctly actually i'm um, joe Excuse Grattos, me, he was going to check on that too i i no, uh, I did check on that. Uh, that is the case. So the intention is that the delivery vehicles will be going to a refueling site two streets down uh, and no refueling will be taking place on the site. Well, that settles that. And did we settle the issue of any type of stormwater control devices? 
well if there's not if there's no if there's no fueling going on in that area then um Okay, then, so that was just for the refueling. Yeah, then, then we need Thank not you. be concerned about the stormwater uh, intercepting any, any, any errant spills on the on the pavement. Um, okay. Thank you. Well, I mean, you, I don't know. I mean, um, I guess we could. There's a couple of issues that are still up in the air. I guess we could, uh, if you want to give the, I, I would suggest, I'll suggest that we that we give the applicant an opportunity to investigate um the path or the, or the possibility of, of, of acquiring from the city an easement a maintenance easement up against on that southerly property line uh we also we also uh said that we wanted to move the snow storage onto uh, his own property were there any other issues that he needs to assume, assuming that the addition quiets the refueling thing are there any other concerns that the board has I would like to make a motion to approve with the, with the, with the stipulation that they negotiate um, a 15 foot maintenance easement with the city and move snow storage on property. Mr. Chairman. That's a big conditional um, approval because if they don't get the, if they, you're saying you're conditioning your, your motion on the acquisition of, of a maintenance, a maintenance easement from the city. That's a big condition. I don't know. I don't know how. M Mr. Chairman, uh, before there can be a motion, this is a hearing and we yes. have not taken testimony. I am sorry. Um, uh, public, yeah, public testimony. Thank you, Mr. May. Uh, Councillor Nicastro uh, has raised her hand and her microphone is now available. Good evening, uh, if there is anybody else who would like to speak, please raise your hand. So start with Councillor Nicastro. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I attended the, the tech review meeting on September 28th, and my notes tell me that the engineer, Chi K, did bring up an easement. Is there a written easement agreement in place dealing with drainage? I think, I think the applicant just, I believe, I don't want to speak to him, but I believe he just asserted that that he that he is aware that there's a there's an app there's an easement agreement between the city property and the and the yes, there is there is there is there's a yes, written there one recorded yes correct and we, we we provided a copy of that to the city okay thank you i i wasn't aware um is is access to the building solely to the new the new building that you're constructing the cold the cold space is it solely through the inside of the existing building Uh, I believe that is the case. Joe, do you know that Know that off the top of your head? Yes, and there's no loading dock or anything over there. You'd actually go through the inside. Okay. So there's, no, there's no doors to the outside? Uh, no, I don't believe so, unless there's a required egress, but not from there because it would be part of the original building. Okay. Um, I'm pleased with your painting the building front. Thank you for um, considering my comment at Tech Review. Um, I'm wondering about putting up a fence to limit access to city land because it's kind of like the elephant in the room is that um, city land is being used constantly by this this business all the time. You're parking trucks on it. Um, you know, you've got that the detention and all that your construction people are going to have to be using it to construct this new building. Maybe you should be required to put a fence up. So that you're not on city land because we're hoping to sell that one day. Well, that would that would thank you, Council, but that would go that would go counter to if he if he's successful in getting an access easement, uh, it would be defeated with the with the installation of a fence. So you're talking about a maintenance easement. Yes, I, that's the, that was what was suggested by a, another board member. Yes, it would be a maintenance easement, which would be defeated by by it by the by the installation of the fence with my experience on the conservation commission it, it's it, you can't put you it's difficult to put a fence up on wetlands there's there's so many other issues involved in that i think the, the maintenance back, easement is sufficient the back right corner is wetland that's why it's green okay yeah. um i'm wondering right now where where are the vehicles that are being refueled mobily are they parked in front of the building at the loading docks? I think we already determined that's not an issue. Yeah. I'm still asking the question. Thank you very much. 
I, 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 again, go ahead, go ahead. because I was not sure that I, I was not aware that this was an issue. I don't, I don't have the answer off the top of my head to exactly, exactly where they're, where they okay. are. Cool. I mean, again, my understanding is, you know, the, the, these, these vehicles that you see in front of the building are refrigerated vehicles and that they need to be refueled, refueled. So my assumption would be that they're being refueled where they sit because they are refrigerated. Just to reiterate the conversation that we had before, is that with the uh, with this addition that eliminates that that need altogether? Okay, so perhaps mm -hmm. a decision by the planning board will be conditioned on the current practice of fueling uh, uh, vehicles will be you know on the site will be discontinued upon construction of the building, since there'll be no need for that. Um, I'm just concerned about what's happening on the right side of the building and being so close to the city space. It's kind of cheeky to show on your plan snow storage and other things on somebody else's land, even if it is the city's. Yeah, I mean, I, I think our take on it, and I, I appreciate what you're saying, I just think our take on it was that, you know, that's part of the stormwater management. They have an easement to do stormwater management on the site. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that the snow melt goes into the detention basin where it's appropriately treated. So I don't think that we were trying to be cheeky. I think we just were, were trying to place the snow storage, uh, you know, where, where, where it made the most sense. I, I, I think I mentioned previously, certainly if that's an issue for the board, I'm happy to move it off of, off of that site and someplace else on, onto our site. I'm not aware of your being allowed to, to store snow any place other than on your property. But I, I think you get the point. Understood, understood. Okay. Thank and that's you. why, Councilor, that's why uh, one of the conditions of approval is that he revised his plan to show a suitable snow storage location on his own site. Okay, good. Um, thank you, that's all I have. I appreciate the investment in a property in Ward 4. Um, if, if your client would be so inclined, we have an abutters lot program that might make it possible for him to buy back up to 5,000 square feet of that land for parking or not for improving, but for parking, et cetera. You can contact me about it. I will certainly mention that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Is there anyone else, uh, any other attendees wishing to speak? Please raise your hand. Seeing none. All right, wonderful. So before we go forward, uh, Mr. May, I think you were the one that suggested it. What what width did you have in mind as a maintenance easement, a, a realistic width of a maintenance easement that you'd like him to uh, to procure from the city? I think 10 or 15 feet uh, as a permanent easement, and then a a, uh, a you know an easement to the whole property during construction, so they can do their soil storage and lay down, and, and then at the end of that, it it comes out. So. A temporary um, construction easement and then a permanent maintenance easement. Yes, sir. Okay. And that is something that we've discussed with the city solicitor's office, so they're aware of it. Oh, well, wonderful. Um, okay. Um, I would. I mean, I would think that something maybe maybe a twenty foot easement might be because it's it's fifteen feet is is pretty modest, but I mean, get what you can get. But in any case. Uh, hearing no, uh, are we correct in saying that there are no other interested parties, public parties? Mr. Mr. Chair, if I, if I could, um, yes, yes, sir. You know, I'm just wondering if if it really makes sense. Uh, and I'm only saying this because I don't I don't really know the answer. To suggest that my client has to come back and get an easement for the use of the entire property, um, you know, during construction, if they really don't think that they're going to need it, uh, do. I'm just wondering if it's a smart move on my part, honestly, to you know um, let them become hamstrung like that. I, is there any way to-, to as, as much as you right. need, as much is, as you need. So as I was gonna say, is there a way for us to craft this language that you know it's a requirement that our client come to the city to negotiate an appropriate appropriate easement associated with the with the addition or something along those lines. I just don't wanna, I, I'm, I'm concerned about putting uh, widths or sizes or locations on it, um, you know, without really having somebody who's going to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations as well as the construction ha having an opportunity to weigh, to weigh in. Weigh in. Uh, I agree with Andrew. So, can I make a motion? 
I, to approve to approve with with the condition that they have a necessary construction easement and a permanent ten foot maintenance easement on the addition, and also relocate the snow storage on their own site. Oh yeah, if they, that's what you, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, um, did you include? I'm sorry. Did um, did you, this one's very detailed? Did you include discontinuing the fueling? Oh, that was a good. Yeah, that was a suggestion by by uh, Council and the yes. Castro. It's it'll yeah, and and a, and a, a point of condition would be that no more refueling would take place after the after the addition is complete. Is that acceptable to uh, the applicant? Well, that's, the state, that's the statement that he made that, that that was actually what was going to happen in fact. So if I I know that it's a, a, a little bit uh, unusual because there's a, a motion going on, but if I if I if with a little bit of indulgence, if I could, um, I don't think that there's a problem with that in concept. But just can can we add the language that says unless they come back to the town for for additional approval, if something changes in the future, you know I don't want to take an existing business exactly. in your in your city. Uh, that something could change later on where they may need to do this, it, it, at least leave it open-ended enough so that they can come back to the city for to, to re-permit the fueling if that becomes okay. necessary. My, 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 is that my, allowable anyway? My position, my position with the proposal is that they're already, they already have to have a permit to refuel. So why are we adding on to that? And if they, if they're not, if they propose that they're not going to have to refuel, they're not going to have to refuel. If they need to refuel, they need to re-permit. Right, and that's that's all that's already incumbent upon them. So I don't think it needs to be part of my motion. Right, Mr. May, is that correct? He, the applicant would have the opportunity to come back and apply if needed. Uh, if needed, yes. Okay. Pam, are you are you straight with these conditions of approval? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so 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 it was basically a motion a motion. Okay. Approval. So a motion you want a 10 foot with, maintenance with, easement? It was a motion to approve with a necessary construction easement and a permanent 10 foot maintenance easement. Maintenance easement. They're relocating the snow storage onto their own site. Yes. Are we not including the ward council's request? I don't think yes. there's a need for that. Yes, we, we are. We are. And if they That's need to come back to apply, if they need to come back and apply, they, they have that opportunity. Craig, if you do not want that as part of your motion, Tony can add it to the motion by amending the motion. All right. Then I would like to amend the motion and add that, please. To include, to include the need to- uh, Discontinue the fuel, fueling. Fuel after the, and, after the addition is complete, yep. And, and Mr. May confirm that the applicant has the opportunity to come back and reapply if needed. Yes. Are we, is everybody clear before we second? Is the applicant clear of what their what their conditions are? I believe that we are. Yes. Very good. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Uh, okay. So roll call vote. Craig Pina. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, applicants, and good evening. Thank you. We pre appreciate your time tonight. And I hope uh, the rest of your meeting moves smoothly. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, that. I do as well. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we're only on the third <laughs> thing. <laughs> well, it takes it takes time to build up a momentum. Okay, so <laughs> I, item number four. Well, look how long it's going to take to resolve the election. Come on. Item number four, site plan approval. Property is at 28 Petronelli Way. It's a proposed conversion. Applicant is 28 Petronelli Way, LLC. Representative is J.K. Holmgren. Uh, and who's the representative? Would that be Mr. Scott Barrier? It would be Scott and I believe um, Jeff Schlossberg. And... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm bad me. I don't, I can't move them, so. I'm moving them now. Promoted to panelist. Mm 
Oh, I moved Scott. I'm sorry. I'll throw Scott out. No. 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 Oh, we need no. Oh, Scott. He needs Scott. He needs Scott. <laughs> and I'll throw me out. Really? Really? <laughs> Scott, Jeff, and There's that's debatable. Jeff. Okay. So do we have it's Scott it's yours, gentlemen? I am here, Mr. Chairman. In spirit? Well, I guess you can't see me, but I'm here. All right. And I'm here as well, Ted Carmen. Uh, good evening, Mr. Carmen. But all right, so for the record, I'll, I'll do it again now that we have the applicant on. We've got a site plan approval at 28 Petron Alley Way as proposed conversion. Uh, applicant is 28 Petron Alley Way LLC, representative J.K. Holmgren Engineering, and that will be Mr. Scott Farrier. Good evening, Mr. Farrier. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, board member Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering, representing Ted Carmen in 28 Petronelli LLC. And uh, what we have before you tonight is a site plan for the existing building at 28 Petronelli Way. Uh, Mr. Common and his group is looking to convert that existing building uh, to 18 residential units. We've been before the Board of Appeals uh, for their approval. We went before tech review uh, back at the end of August. They had some, uh, some questions uh, that were brought up. We made all of the, the changes that were brought up during that tech review meeting. Uh, it was about seven or eight things. I'll just hit them quick, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we added vertical granite curbing in the parking lot. We moved the dumpster location away from Franklin Street, added a concrete block wall around the dumpster, added wheel stops. Uh, we showed some additional landscaping on Franklin Street. We're replacing the existing sewer service and a gas service has been shown from Franklin Street to the building. Uh, so that's really the changes. Just to really go over it quick, Mr. Chairman, the, the existing building takes up the vast majority of the lot. We were left with a little bit of a, of a notch at the very front right-hand side of the building. Uh, right along Petronelli Way where we have a, uh, a truck delivery parking space proposed uh, just to, to handle any package deliveries, pizza deliveries, anything like that. Uh, we have the ability for uh, parking in the Carpenter garage directly across the street. So Mr. Common and his folks have uh, worked out the agreement on that to get the parking there. And in addition to that, we have three spaces at the rear of our property uh, up on Franklin Street. So that's how we've uh, addressed the parking. In addition to that, we do have some drainage proposed on the site. As I said, right now the site's pretty much 100% impervious. Uh, we have added some drainage on the site underneath that, uh, that truck parking space in the front to get enough infiltration that should handle the roof runoff. So uh, we're doing the best we can with that. It's certainly not great, but it's better than, than what's there now. Uh, in addition to that, as we said in the, the quick review, we've shown a little bit of landscaping up against Franklin. And as you come further down towards Petronelli alongside our building. So we're, uh, we're right now we have zero green space. This proposal gets us up to 2%. Well, 2% is better than none. Two is better than none, sir. Uh, does that complete your presentation, Scott? That will. Okay, I had, um, I might be confusing or confusing my sites. Is this, is this a site that you had, uh, uh, that you have an agreement with the Brockton Parking Authority for additional parking or are you sites, are you parking sufficient? We have the, the agreement with to park in the garage across the street. Okay, that's, that's what I thought. Okay, right. Yep. Yep, you have a, you have a signed agreement with them. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, and then the only other, the only other thing before I open it up is that I know it's one of your, your uh, on your site, your bullet points on your site plan. You did, you did say that you were going to uh, somehow establish a, a, a stabilized construction exit, which would be because you're on Petronelli Way, that would be very useful. So, so which side of the building? Is it fair to say that it's the east side of the building where most of the construction is going to take place? Yes, sir. So is there some, can you indicate on the plan using your best judgment, indicate on the plan where you would like to see a stabilized construction exit and then put, put a detail on your detail sheet. I'd really appreciate that. We can certainly do that. Yep, and so do you expect, do you ex I mean, and the other thing is that you're probably gonna to wanna to put as a note on there, you wanna put a note on there that you're gonna, you're gonna limit the 
construction access to either Petronelli Way or to, or to Franklin Street, I, I, I wouldn't want to see you going on to both streets if you can avoid that. Um, Is that something you can avoid? I suppose I can, although I, I would think, to be honest with you, during construction, I would think most of the, the folks would come uh, down Petronelli Way, uh, you know, more than likely in a westerly direction and, and cut into the, what's right now the city of Brockton parking lot alongside the right hand, uh, the right hand side of our building and, uh, and then exit back out to Franklin Street. Yeah, my, my concern, I guess, was the, was, you know, tracking, tracking, especially you're in, right in downtown, they would be tracking the uh, soil and debris on the public way. That, that was my concern. Mm. Probably traffic as well, but anyway. I mean, I, I don't, I, I can't estimate how much construction traffic you're, you're going to anticipate, so I don't know. Yeah, there's, you know, to be honest with you, there's not a heck of a lot of site work, Mr. Chairman. It's just, you know, that parking area in the front with the, the infiltration systems and then some curbing to go in. Uh, not a lot of excavation to go on at all. All right. Well, that was my only concern. Uh, board members, uh, anybody else have any other concerns I'd like to share at this time? Nope. Nope. No. All right, just being a public hearing, Mr. May, do you see anybody with their hands raised that may want to make a comment? Uh, let me stop sharing so I can see. Hang on. Um, pardon me. Uh, if anybody would uh, raise your hands if you'd like to say something. I do not see anyone with their hands up, sir. All right. Uh, well, hearing no public comment, um, and if there's no comment on the part of anybody else, uh, Chief, there's no comment, uh, Chief, Chief Williams, no? Okay, good. Um, would someone like to make a motion that includes, uh, that would include in your motion the indicating uh, stabilized construction exit with a detail, please? I'd like to make, take, make a motion to approve site plan approved 28 Petronelli Way with um, the conditions you mentioned. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, vote on the roll call. Craig Pina? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you, folks. Thanks very much. Okay. Uh, I'm hanging around, Rob. All right. Well, I'm going to delete you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, item With us for the rest of the night. Yes. Like it or not. Okay. Just so so item number five. 19 May. Site plan approval is property at 19-31 Main Street. It's proposed conversion. Uh, Joe has his hand up. I'm sorry? Joe has a stand up. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Keep talking. All right. Uh, new uh, applicant is New 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 Vision Enterprises. The represent representative is uh, <laughs> Scott Barry at J.K. Holmgren. Joseph Gonzalez is promoted, and uh, Scott, the floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Uh, again, Scott Ferry from Holmgren Engineering representing Joe Gonzalez uh, from New Vision Enterprises. And uh, this project is about a stone's throw away from the previous one, 19 uh, Main Street, right at the corner of Green and Main Street, uh, almost directly across from Petronelli Way. And uh, what Mr. Gonzalez is proposing on this project is to uh, rehab the existing building uh, that sits on the property. And uh, his plan is to have uh, a mixed use, three retail spaces, hopefully, uh, to go along with 22 residential units uh, broken up between uh, one and two bedroom units. Uh, similar to the other site, old building, small lot, about 10,000 square feet. 95% of it is uh, the building. Uh, we do have a truck parking area on the, the front left-hand corner right there on Green Street. Again, to, to try to settle that uh, delivery truck issue, we've got a dumpster directly behind it. 
And then the rest of that 13 foot strip that we have, uh, we're planting some grass, some trees and putting a little permeable walkway to get to a little, uh, a small patio in the back for any of the residents that would wanna use it. Uh, again, on this site uh, right now, currently there is no drainage on the site. We're proposing uh, some subsurface infiltration within that, uh, that little strip alongside the building, again, to handle the roof runoff. So it'll uh, certainly be a, an improvement over what's there currently. Uh, all other utilities uh, are on the property. We did uh, go to tech review on this one in September. Uh, we had a few things. Uh, fire department requested that we add the FDC to the front of the building facing Main Street. So we proposed that. We added some screening around the dumpster. Uh, we showed a new six foot service. Right now the service comes off of Pleasant Street, both the sewer and water, and goes under the neighboring building to get into our building. So obviously that's not a, a great situation. So we're gonna uh, disable that, both those water and sewer services and come in off of Green Street with new water and new sewer. Uh, really the only other issue we had with the city engineer, he asked that we just waterproof the west side of the building uh, where we're going to have that infiltration system there. So we're going to waterproof that entire length of the building. Uh, really, those are the significant changes. Again, similar to the other one, we have an agreement with the city to uh, have parking available within the Carpenter Garage on Petronelli. Uh, in addition to that, there is on-street parking uh, on Green Street that is almost always available. I'm sure it probably won't be once uh, 22 people move into these apartments, but currently Green Street is almost always empty and there is uh, spacing obviously on Main Street as well, uh, although, if you're lucky enough to get one of those. Although we don't, we don't count on street. We time. don't. Yeah. It might snow. What? Is this, is, is this similar to the same floor plan that was in the proposal? Yes. That was previously approved in this building? Yes. Is that, Scott, is that strip, is that strip of land that's behind the building right now, is that currently uh, impervious? Yes, primarily. Okay, so you're, you're greening it up. Yep. And you're infiltrating the roof. Yes, that's correct. Any other comments on the part of the board? Um, just a question, because I think we looked at this last time, or maybe it was at tech review, but so, can you explain how the parking is going to be and how much parking this building needs again? I'm just trying to figure out how, especially in the winter time, what it's going to be like. Yeah, we have uh, we have 22 units available, residential units, okay. and uh, then the kind of existing, uh, you know, commercial uses that are going on now. In addition, we're hoping to get a restaurant in the property. Uh, so the you know people that uh, using the commercial property uh, would have the opportunity to park in the, the carpenter parking garage uh, like anybody else in the public would and, and, and pay for parking uh, that way. In addition to that, we'll have uh, a, a space available for each of the units, one space per residential unit available uh, if the people that are renting them want them. Uh, you know, most of the projects that we're seeing downtown, the, the few that are kind of up and running, Surprisingly, the uh, the need for parking isn't as great as we would think, okay. or as I would think, anyways. I was just Scott. I would just think it's like in the winter time what it's going to be like if they're using like Green Street. Yeah, yeah. They and means you know, but yeah. Again, everybody will have a dedicated space in the option. garage. So, uh, yeah, they'll have to use the garage. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Larry. Any, anyone else uh, on the board have any comments or concerns? Okay, uh, is there anybody that you can see, Mr. May, on the public? Any attendees wishing to speak? Please raise your hand. And I do not see any hands raised. <laughs> All right, um, I, and I know it's a, it's kind of a boilerplate thing on most site plans, but here again, small matter, uh, Scott, you did mention on there about a stabilized construction exit. Is there something, can you put like a little small one where that proposed truck, truck parking is just, just to- We certainly can. 
just a, a, a indicate a small uh, and exit, exit exit there with the detail on your detail sheet, please. We'll definitely do that, sir. All right. Uh, a motion, please. Motion approved. Second. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to approve the site plan rule call vote. Craig Pina? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Tony? You're muted. I'm, I'm on mute, yes. Uh, Larry Hassan? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Number six is a preliminary subdivision. Property is at 134 Amiston Street. Uh, it's a six lot residential subdivision. Robert Keene is the applicant. Attorney James Burke is the is the representative. Uh, is there anybody else in addition to Mr. Burke who will be speaking or presenting? If you could raise your hand. And I would like to promote you to panelists. <clears throat> those presenting. Shy man, who is shy man? Uh, you have been promoted to panelist. And then when we get to the testimony, we will take other um, guests. So shy man, could you identify yourself, please? Just on mute. Shy man, you are muted at the moment. Is he in a butter rub? I do not know. I no, he's an he engineer. Is. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. He's Hi. the engineer. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm the engineer uh, in the uh, Hardy Pressman Design Group in the firm. Okay, well, good evening. Uh, you, if you would like, you could proceed with your presentation. Why don't I start? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, planning board. Attorney Jim Burke, and I have the pleasure to represent the developers of this very small project at the end of Armisen Street. Uh, these gentlemen purchased the property, uh, designed a, a potential subdivision, uh, and it is a, a preliminary subdivision plan before you because it's going to require uh, going to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So among today's uh, uh, efforts, we hope that the Planning Board will give its assent to allow us to proceed because the lots lack size and lack frontage uh, to uh, be allowed to uh, be built as of right. Uh, we uh, initially met with Councillor Rolali uh, and had a, uh, a, uh, a meeting on site so that the neighbors would have a full ability to understand the nature of the project, which I think is a very, uh, 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 a, not only a small project, but uh, it, it is at the end of Armiston Street. It is uh, uh, enclosed on two sides by Ames Norwell uh, State Park. Uh, it has one residential property beside it. And the intent is that initially, and I, I know the reading su suggested six lots, but I believe that uh, Chai Mai will tell you that the revised plan is for five lots uh, that we would take to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the uh, uh, the plan is, uh, I think, an excellent reuse uh, of a piece of property to allow some uh, 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 good middle class uh, uh, single family homes uh, in a residential area uh, that will have a secluded cul-de-sac uh, and I think will be very desirable for the city. Uh, it actually will have minimal impact on the surrounding neighborhood. There were a number of comments uh, that uh, came out of the uh, uh, initial uh, uh, tech review uh, that have been addressed by the engineers and we'll let Chai address it relating to uh, not only the uh, uh, original plan uh, for sewerage, uh, but also the uh, uh, size of the, uh, the street uh, and the sidewalk. So uh, Chai, why don't you go ahead and, and, and make uh, your presentation on how the plan has been modified uh, to hopefully make it a better presentation to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, uh, if I may, I'd like to share the screen uh, of the uh, site plan. Please go ahead. So 
So let's get started with the um, the title. Uh, as um, we mentioned before, now the original plan was submitted with six proposed six subdivision lots, and uh, on this revised plan, we have um, reduced to five lots. It's a um, lotting plan, and this is a um, plan showing the um, the subdivision roadway coming in with five uh, proposed lot and for presentation purposes, we also showed all the building uh, setback and um, proposed building fitting in into the lot. Um, what we did on the revision is to shorten these, uh, the roadway a little bit so we get, um, we'd be able to um, get better frontage of each of the lot and uh, we resolve some of the uh, earlier comments on the uh, detention ponds. So what I'd like to do is um, we received some comments from the uh, tech review and I would like to pretty much go uh, item by item and address those. Uh, first of all from the city engineers, um, he has uh, comments about our horizontal and vertical datum and this revised plan has addressed that with the proper datum. Uh, number two, the, ex the material of existing water and sewer should be shown on the print. And again, since this is a preliminary subdivision print, we will be working with the uh, department to identify the, um, the pipe material and we will pro provide proper details to, for our uh, utility connections. Um, the third item is uh, he suggests us to screen the contour line, which we did. Um, the existing contour is on the background and proposed contour in the foreground uh, for clarity. And number four, layout plans not comply to the 50 foot uh, roadway, right of way requirement. Um, this is one of the waiver we are asking for the, um, uh, the board uh, requesting from the from the board we deal some 50 to uh, 40 foot requirements and number five lot size not comply and as um, mr. Burke um, indicate um, we are going to the uh, zoning board of appeal asking for variance for the for for the lot in video size and number six um, there's some question about lot five and lot six, the layout with the detention ponds. Um, so the revised plan actually reduced the lots to five lots and we, we are able to fit in the detention basin in the rear uh, with a with a easement uh, for, for the homeowners association uh, for future main, maintenance. And the um, to address some of the other concern, our detention pond is completely away from the uh, 25 foot buffer to, to, uh, to isolate the wetland identified on the site. Uh, number seven is um, the comments about our, our drainage pipe. Um, uh, not having enough cover, cover, soil cover on the pipe and we we do the pipe profile and we correct that um, items. Number eight, drain manhole. Um, again, um, it show uh, to be above the ground and we correct that. And we also have comments from the fire department. Um, they review the plans and indicate the 30 foot proposed uh, curb to curb pavement is uh, acceptable and this 30 foot Curb to curb is basically mimic uh, the existing Amstone M's, Street. Uh, that is the existing width. And they feel comfortable that uh, the existing fire truck can get access through the existing street and uh, they will be able to continue on onto the new subdivision roadway. Um, let's go to the next page. And they have concern about the um, the end of the existing street that tapered down into the uh, um, individual driveway to the to the existing lot, and this proposal is going to be widening the um, 
the end of the street to the full 30 feet and and connect into a, a new proposed subdivision road, which is also 30 foot curb to curb paving. Um, then the men also uh, comments on the um, turning radius um, from the subdivision road connecting into the existing street and we when we revise that into a slight angle, um, that's um, po provide um, ample turning radius from the existing street into the proposed subdivisions. Um, I guess on the previous plan, we proposed 20 feet, 26 feet pavement width. And um, to address that, we increased the pavement width from uh, 30 foot curb to curb. And I can show you on the um, on the street section is curb to curb paving 30 feet. And we are proposing a five foot sidewalk on one side. And um, on one side of the road, basically where the house is. And on the on the south side, we are not proposing a sidewalk, which basically not serving anyone. Um, so we don't feel that it's necessary. And the last comments on the fire department is that um, they, they would like to see uh, additional hydrants at the uh, beginning of the um, subdivision row. We are proposing one at the end of the row. And also, we'll, I just want to identify that there is an existing hydrant uh, right at the intersection here. So, and we'll work with the fire department if they still feel additional hydrant is required and we will do that. And lastly, there is one more correspondent from the engineering department. Um, item number one, cross, crossing of the 150 foot electrical easement uh, require approval on end grid, uh, national grid. As the plan show here, there's 150 foot wide uh, easement. So, um, we will be working with National Grid to resolve any legal issues. Uh, make sure you know we have the legal right to um, come off our properties within the easement into this um, to create the subdivisions. And again, the all the proposed lot is away from the um, the way we lay out is away from the easement itself. And number two, that's an insufficient separation between the proposed gas and water line. And we try to, we try to increase the separation. Now we show a five foot separation. And, um, and again, we'll work with the gas company to, um, to finalize the design and um, make sure there's enough sub, uh, separations in between the utilities. The next item is the, um, they reiterate the, the roadway does not conform to the 50 foot right of way layout uh, requirement by the rule and regulations of the board. And again, we are requesting a waiver uh, to reduce the right of way from 50 to 40 feet. Um, the next item is the, in regard to the um, uh, sanitary, because the site the topography of the site uh, from basically from the intersection um, sloped down towards the rear of the site, uh, the roadway. So um, a typical graffiti sewer is not, uh, is not um, cannot be built to surface these new houses. So the, we are proposing a force main. Um, so it's going to be um, individual house will have a pump station to pump into a force main, then pump into the uh, sewer manhole. So the, the force main itself is going to be maintained by the homeowner association. This is uh, proposed to be a private way. Um, there will be a homeowner, homeowner association agreement in place for all the maintenance of the utilities. Um, the last item on the um, Commons is that they have concern about the sewer easement, uh, which shown right here on, on the plan. Again, he his comment is that the sewer east easement doesn't own by the town. It's, it's benefit the gables, which is another another 
development near here. Um, again, we'll work with um, our attorney and also the um, um, the other development to to make sure you know everything we do is not going to be affecting their existing utilities. And that's pretty much summarizing um, our revised plan and um, all the respond to all the comments, if there's any questions. All right, thank you, sir. Um, board members, do you have any, uh, what are your comments or concerns, please? I, uh, I appreciate that you're, you're, you're doing what you can in the confined space you have, but being a complete streets uh, community, I, I, I would personally, I'd like to see sidewalks on both sides of the road with the with the with the thirty foot roadway with a ten foot easement on each side. Um, other than that, um, that's pretty. And, and the the other thing, the, the application says six lots. I, I you you addressed it in your presentation, but we're seeing five lots. Um, it's it, it's true. You you reduce the, the lot size, the lot number to comply with lot size. Correct. Yes. Correct. So other other than, other than the actual size of the, the width of the street and the easement, um, that's I have no other questions. Um, anybody else comments? Um, Craig, can you just repeat what you said about reducing to the lot size? But they went down. Well, the the application was for it, uh, it, on the on the application it says six lots, but they're showing five. Right. And it looks like they reduced the number to comply with lot size and increase lots and frontage as best they could in the, in the confined area. So it's That's actually five. Assumption. What's yes. that? So it's actually five. Yeah. Yes, the revised friends is uh, proposing five lots. Okay. Anyone else with comments or concerns? Uh, well, my, my chairman, I'm sorry. I, Mr. Chairman, I don't really have any major comments, but I, you know, again, looking at the roadway in that turn in there, um, and I've been down there, I've, I've driven by this spot a few times too, is, is that, are they going to be able to manage if they have to get a fire apparatus in there? And if it's going to be a homeowners association for utilities um, for that pump station is is there anything else going to be required by the city i'm just throwing that out there required by the city in, in what regard and what is going to be the city's responsibility then if there's going to be a homeowners association in there to well, cover the pump it's station a, and if it's a private way if it's a private way and if it's uh it's and it's, it's going to be the, those those homeowners are going to be dependent on the strength and the structure of the homeowners association. The city, the city won't won't have any involvement there. Uh, as far as the turn, as far as the turning of uh, emergency equipment, they're providing the required radius. Okay. Uh, at the cul-de-sac is a, is a sixty foot wide, sixty foot uh, radius, so they meet that. Um, any other questions or concerns? No, I mean, I think the, the actual plan looks good and, it, and it, they've obviously had spoken to Chike a number of times, I can tell, because I see a lot of things on this plan that Chike likes to see. So I, I, I think the plan looks pretty good. Well, I mean, I have, uh, I, I have some concerns. Uh, for, some, for a reason that I'm not sure why you're doing it, you've selected a 40-foot wide layout. The, the city hasn't approved a 40-foot wide layout in some time. They will entertain uh, the various waiver requests for some physical features on a new road, whether it be, I'm not suggesting to you that we're necessarily going to do it, but as an example, sidewalks or curbing, uh, those those things. But as far as the, the width of a way, the width of a way has been 50 feet in Brockton uh, for some time, and I'm not aware of the planning board, uh, in my memory, waiving the uh, width of the way. I, I, I don't know, You. it looks like one of the things that you've got going in your favor, your lots are narrow, but one of the things you've got going for your favor is the depths of your lot. So I'm a little bit confused as to why you would limit yourself to a, I can appreciate you don't have any houses on the south side, but 
why you would select a 40 foot wide layout. I don't know. Well, the, I, I mean, the existing Armistrong, Armistrong is, is we, are, we are pretty much mimic the same size of the street, you know, right. as the well, pavement width and, and so forth. And uh, this is a five lot subdivisions at, on a dead end street. So we are not getting any public traffic into here unless you are living there. Right. And that, and that's, no pass, that's no pass through traffic. Yep, and I appreciate I appreciate that that thought or that um, that you know that that suggestion that it is a dead end that doesn't have any hope of being con con uh, continued beyond that, and that's why you know at the board's discretion they may entertain some other waivers. But again, sir, the to my memory we have uh, we haven't entertained the reduction of the width of the legal way from from fifty to forty. In my memory, you could check on that. Yeah, and also and I, I also had a concern. To the extent that that it's within our purview, we're still up in the air about whose whose uh, you know, whose jurisdiction is what. But your, your lot number two, for example, is very narrow. Uh, I, I I don't know. You'll have to go forward to the zoning board to see what their what what their response is to that. That lot number two under t in, in today's uh, lot size climate would suggest that it's rather confined, but. And say, the similarly with uh, when you look at your building box on lot number three, pretty congested in my opinion. It's pretty small. But th those were my immediate concerns, and I, I I see where you're going with your your force main there. You've got to drop an elevation uh, about thirty something feet from the entrance down to that the proposed siting locations of the two houses on four and five there. So you that's the only way you're going to address that, but. Mr. May, uh, any any comments on the part of the planning department? Did Mr. May, did we lose him? Oh, he's muted. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. May, did you hear that? Any of that dialogue? Oh, um, what did you do? I'm sorry. Yes, I did hear that dialogue. Okay, did, did you have any other comments that in the behalf of the planning department that you'd like to share? Um, the planning department is concerned with the width of the, of the layout of the road uh, at less than 50 feet and, and also the width of the pavement, uh, neither one of which meets the city standards. Um, we have not approved a layout of, of less than 50 feet in uh, and, and especially not in a senior residential development in a very, very, very long time. Um, and so that's something that the, the board really needs to take into consideration. Um, again, it is a preliminary subdivision, so nothing is... is yeah, it's a work in progress. I mean, again, th those are the features that we're uh, leaving. Uh, so the, the, the need for sidewalks on both sides, especially if you've got, if you don't have any houses on one side. I mean, all these things can be discussed, but it's, but the city, I, from my understanding, takes a pretty hard line on the actual width of a proposed way. And I appreciate your explanation that the other, that the, that the abutting streets there are at 40, but those streets are, those without doing any research, those are pretty old streets. So, I mean, those are some common... If I may? Yes. Um, the one thing I'm wondering about is there is no radius where the two intersections meet. It's just a straight line. And shouldn't the, uh, there be a radius when you come out of the new subdivision onto Armiston? Well, as long as he can create, as long as he can create an acceptable turning radius at the, at the gutter line, that's the, that's the most important thing. I, I don't know. It's unclear to me where his. I mean, he really should. He really should be developing, you know, radius minimum radiuses at the property line. We we do require a thirty foot radius at the property line unless the planning board waives it. Yes, uh, and then and then the most the most critical radius would be the the radius at the gutter line because that's where the vehicles turn. So to your point, that there should be a. It looks like he. he it looks like he can accommodate that. And I think he can. I'm not sure. Yeah, the again at the at the end of the street there, the the, the existing street 
pavement narrowed down into the private driveway. So it's our intent to widen uh, the Amherst Street um, in, in the intersection from the narrow uh, driveway to the full 30 feet, you know, uniform with the rest of the street. And then we we'll have, we'll have a curb radius to meet with our, our new roadway radius. So it'll be a very um, uh, slight turn into the subdivision road. I think the thing is we don't want to we don't want to match the old standard of the old Amerson Street, which wasn't built to any kind of zoning or codes or anything like that. We we need to make it can make new construction conform with what we require now. Um, Mr. Chairman, one of the things that that makes this plan difficult, especially to read is that you you don't really see on the Armistead um, where the pavement ends, um, where that becomes private property, and where the the driveway to the other lots. Because if you remember, these were uh, these two oversized lots were single family homes at one time. And so there is a driveway um, that almost looks like the extension of Armiston that actually goes to a single family home. I think I think he does try to indicate that, Mr. May, on sheet. Are you are we are we on sheet C two? Um, I, I think we are. Yeah. I think he does try to indicate the existing. I know it's irregular, but there's this paving. He's showing irregular paving at the end of Armiston Street. There is that. Can you, you can you blow that up to adult size? Yeah, yeah. Right on, there, the, I, on the screen, right, you see the um, existing paving line. Yes, yes, that's that's, that's narrowed down at the end of the street. Our right. our proposal right. is to widen the the pavement to the full thirty foot, so it's um, uniformly uh, curved curved into the uh, meet the the new. You know, do you know what the existing paving width is on Aviston Street as you go as you go further as you go further west? Uh, it's thirty foot. It is existing thirty feet. Um, I believe so. I, okay. I, yeah. Okay. But then you've got you've got new you've got Park View Park View Lane meeting this intersection as well. It says under construction. Is this where the, is this where the those condominiums are? Where those where the with this what's in what's in that area up there? Why am I getting confused by this location? Well, single family you, development. Single family de development to the south of that. The um, condominium project is like north of that. Okay. That new lane here, that's now that is a it's a it's a one way. It's not a two way street going in and out of there. Oh, where it used to be. Right. It says, um, Mr. Chairman, if I could um, show you a Google uh, Earth photo, if they would stop sharing for just a second. Certainly, that would be very helpful. So this is the area in question. Um, so this is where the pavement starts to become irregular. Yeah. So here you can see we're at about the 30, uh, 30 34 foot width becomes irregular. This is the new um, road coming in, but you can see that this is almost a driveway or was the driveway um, to the house that burned down. And this is the driveway into the single family home, which is almost at the end of that. And so we're, we're gonna have to consider how this gets treated. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, we've shared some thoughts and shared some concerns. Again, this is a preliminary plan. It's a, it's a tool for discussion. Um, does this, I guess I can ask the applicant or the applicant's representative, does this uh, give the applicant or the applicant's representative some, some, some thoughts or some, some guidance to go forward with or? Well, we've already had uh, a number of discussions uh, uh, based on the uh, uh, initial uh, go around from the engineering department. And certainly 
we can uh, uh, take that up uh, in terms of an improvement. Uh, but I, I'd suggest the what they'd like to do, uh, and and the challenge here today is to get uh, basically an assent from the uh, planning board to allow them to proceed with the uh, uh, zoning board of appeals. And I guess if we get to the point uh, of having the approval of the dimensional mm -hmm. issues, uh, we can then uh, uh, fight out the uh, roadway issue with the planning board in the definitive subdivision stage. Mr. Chair, if you're yeah. going to move this, allow them to move forward, any of your conditions need to be in your letter because you either push it forward the way it is, push it forward with suggestions or deny it. If you push it forward the way it is, it's gonna be difficult to then come back and say, but all these things need to be changed. Yeah, that's, that's a concern that I had as well. Um, well stated. Um, I mean, one of the concerns, and I, and I understand your challenge, Attorney Burke, in that you're, you're, you'd like to get before the zoning board with this plan. One of the concerns I would have in doing that is that, is that I don't know if I want to use the word misrepresent, but if we, if we go forward with this plan showing a 40 foot wide layout, I personally will give you the benefit of my own thoughts. I, I, I wouldn't be in favor of a 40 foot wide layout. Now we can, again, we can talk in another discussion when we get to the definitive stage, if it gets that far, about the wisdom of uh, waving a sidewalk or, or, or adjusting the, the width of the paving. Those things are all up for discussion, as, as I'm sure you're well aware. But the, but the width, the width of the, the width of the, the width of the way, 20, 20 foot wide way. I, I, I'm afraid. Of, I wonder if that misrepresents the intent of the planning boards conditional approval by, by, by following this thing because it's not I, I don't I don't have a lot of hope for that you would have to actually make that as a comment that you you could approve it with conditions a condition that the roadway be increased because, because the impact thinking that through the impact of widening that from 40 to 50 and it looks like of all the options that they have and don't have, there are lots of fairly, fairly deep. I mean, 157, 157. There are lots of fairly deep on the northerly side of the road. But you're going to you're going to reduce you're going to reduce the area of those lots if you go from 40 to 50 by uh, you know whatever whatever that math works out to be. So I don't I don't mean to be labor, but that's I'm wondering um, I'm wondering if, if if you could come back. With, with a preliminary plan, you don't need to add, you don't need to adjust the whole plan set. But if you could come back with a plan that addresses the concerns that we discussed tonight for our endorsement and then move forward with that, does that seem reasonable to the board members? I'm okay with that. Yeah. I mean, I think because I have to. Well, the applicant is excited about it, but I think that's probably the best <laughs> no, way to go. No, I, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm trying to be reasonable here in my suggestion. I, I don't. Um, there's no need for the applicant to totally revise, right? Grade and everything else, because what is he looking to do? Mr. Looking to get before the zoning board of appeals. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, before we sign this in ink, there are at least two attendees who would like to provide testimony. Okay, I didn't think that a preliminary was a public hearing, but let's certainly go at well, it. Well, it's not, but if you would like to allow them, uh, that is in your purview. Certainly. Uh, um, if you want to recognize, if you want to recognize any of the abutters. So, uh, Jamal, you're um, unmuted and may speak. Um, Liz Lasso, you will be up as soon as Jamal is done. Hello, everyone. I'm not sure if everyone can hear and see me. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you, but we cannot see you if you want to be on camera. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, I'm optional if you guys want to put me on. It's, okay, cool. So first of all, for the applicant, I want to say welcome to the neighborhood. Did you, did you have a comment or a concern, sir? I think he's gone. 
He's just muted. Oh, there he is. Here we go. Okay, great. Cool. I think it was. Okay, so yeah, to the applicant, I want to say welcome to the neighborhood. Uh, I've seen the site plan. I was there for the public forum discussion, and it, it really went well. Um, you know, it's a it's a really nice vision, absolutely. Uh, but there was just some uh, risk scenarios that I want to run, run past you just to take in consideration for this development site. So the first one is, um, will there be any development work done on Armistrand Street itself? I appreciate there was a thorough discussion about the width of the street, but did the developer have plans on doing anything? Because I noticed right now when you go to the intersection of uh, Armistrand Street and Parkview Lane, it, it, there's kind of a roundabout at that at the dead end, but I notice on the site plan, it doesn't, I don't see the existence of a roundabout. I see something more of um, something else. So uh, the question is, will, is there any expected road work to be done on the existing street or to as Armstrong Street? I, I believe the applicant stated that as part of this project that he was going to, uh, he was going to go back in a, in a westerly direction up Armstrong Street and connect with the existing, I think he claimed, made claim that there was a 30 foot wide paving there and he was going to rejoin that and, and clean up that and clean up that intersection. That certainly would be a condition of the approval of a definitive subdivision, sure. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Secondly is that um, with the lot, so on the original plan, it was originally six lots, now it's five lots. What's the minimum size of the smaller, smallest lot? Uh, if that's a residential, if that's an I1C, which I think it is, it's a, a 175 feet of frontage and 30,000 square feet. The lot, the lot size, the lot size as proposed, they're all going to require variance. So th that's 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 something that's got to go to ZBA anyway. No, okay, but, to be determined. So right now we'd say, I mean, looking at the plan, I get the impression they're probably going to be less than a quarter acre lots. Is that about accurate? The lot, the actually. I, from the proposal, all the lot sizes are a quarter of a quarter they're of an acre. They're roughly a quarter acre. All right, quarter acre. Okay, good, cool. Thank you. And the next is that now the HOA. Now, I, originally in the public discussion, or it, I know at the time you guys weren't planning on make, and having an HOA, but now there is an HOA. And I'm just curious to know what are the total responsibilities of, the, of this expected for this HOA? Because one of the things I, I heard was that they would be responsible for the utility costs and maintenance of the site. So could you describe a little bit more? What are the expected responsibilities of the HOA? Well, I mean, that might be getting a little ahead of ourselves, but Attorney Brick, would, would you care to address that just, just briefly? Again, uh, it, I don't think there's been a total definitive document drawn up, but I think from listening to the uh, engineer, we'd be talking about maintaining the uh, uh, sewer pumping uh, system uh, and uh, maintaining the roadway because it's a private way. Okay, noted, noted. And um, so, okay, so as it pertains to sewer pumping system now, will the site have a storm water management plan or specifically will there be catch basins? Do Will they exist? Yes, that's going to be required, sure. I'll let the, if the engineer, without going into too much elaboration, but yes, there's going to be There'll be a stormwater management system, sure. It's part of the definitive subdivision submission, of course. Okay. All right. And, and with the um, with with so now the next topic is about butters foundation risk. So, will there be plans for uh, using large drill bits to drill into granite rocks or dynamite blasting to remove the rocks? Has it been? Has it been? Has it been? Has it been established that there are in fact the, this ledge on the site, engineer, Mr. Uh, is there any known ledge or outcropping on the on the site? Um, we let me look at the the gray here. I, mean, I think I, this level of detail, to be honest, yeah. I think this level of detail. I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. I appreciate your concern and your questions, but we're in the preliminary plan stage, and I think that those things. Um, would probably be better addressed at the definitive plan stage. I okay. mean, we're talking, we're talking really basic things right now. I mean, I appreciate yeah. the concern, mm -hmm. and, and he certainly any developer would be responsible for any blasting that they did or drilling that they did. They would require the various permits from the fire department and so forth. But that might be getting a little ahead of ourselves. Okay. Well, I, I just want to raise it just for developers' consideration. But thank sure. you. Yeah. 
Uh, Ms. Lasso, you are up next, and um, Mr. Miller, you are on deck. Hi, good evening. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so very much. Uh, first, I'd like to start by saying how uh, the residents on Armiston Street are very excited at the possibility of having these new homes developed on our street. I was uh, taken aback and a little disappointed to hear that the lots have been reduced to only six homes, I mean, to only five homes instead of the six. Um, and um, I'm basically representing the street. I am the vice president of the uh, Northeast Brockton uh, Homeowners Association in Brockton. And um, we are uh, looking to speak about the structural integrity of Armiston Street. Um, and holding all of the weight of the proposed construction vehicles that will be utilizing our street on a daily basis. As you guys have all seen from the plan that was just shown and on Mr. May when he brought up the actual satellite photo of the street, um, this is a, a, a private way that is very limited with the amount of space coming and going up and down the street and there are no sidewalks. This street is filled with families that are very concerned because of the structural integrity of the street. Our road has been already severely compromised by the use of the construction trucks that were being uh, put on our street for the development behind us in that Parkview Lane and Heritage Court uh, development. Uh, they had been using, Brophy and Phillips had been using our street for uh, bringing their trucks in and out and they were eventually told to cease and desist doing that. Uh, they had put in a, uh, a crash gate at the bottom of Armiston Street to make Parkview uh -huh. Lane extension not usable uh, for construction vehicles. Uh, the gate has since been removed and those construction vehicles are now once again utilizing Armiston Street, which has been a huge concern and the city has done nothing to stop them from doing that. So my point is, is that before any construction begins on this new project we would like to have a structural integrity test done on our street to make sure that we don't have any kind of catastrophic accidents like with a gas a water line to be going uh, awry i personally have had the gas company come out to my property and mark lines in the street and onto my property where they believe that the street has already compromised been compromised by these vehicles uh, and that there's a potential gas leak so um, there are many, many cracks in my street, which was just repaved a number of years ago due to having to replace the sewer lines on Armiston Street because of structural integrity that was done by heavy weighted trucks on the street. Now, one of my neighbors who's here with me right now tonight, Lita Levine, had been told by a Brockton, uh, who was it who told you that the street did not have the structural integrity to hold over a certain tonnage? That was, that was way back when we first moved in. And, and when they redid the street to redo the sewer lines, because the sewer lines were cracked, again, due to the uh, uncompromised like, situation where the street did not have the structural integrity to hold the trucks, that they've already had to redo the sewer lines. So the sewer lines being cracked, again, would be like the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is to have a gas or a water line compromised due to the heavy trucks coming and going up the street. Now, if we could just do a structural integrity test to make sure that the street can withhold these trucks, we would be more than welcome to just like move forward and welcome everyone into the neighborhood. Believe me, we all want to see this happen, but we all want to see it happen in the safest, best manner so that we can all be protected. All right. Well, thank, thank you very much. Your concern is, your concern is, a, is, a, is a serious one and it, it's, it's well noted. Um, if someone know if someone knows with certainty, is that development to the south of this project, whatever that whatever that was that the development that was the formerly was the over fifty five community? Is that where we are? Yes, it was. It was originally over fifty five and older community, and then they applied for a variance to build any kind of home for any um, suitable sure. buyer. Family. So is that my guess? My question was, is that is that construction complete now? No, they're still working on Heritage Court, which by the way, those trucks are still coming and going And they're taking, what's been done is that they put a do not enter sign at the end of Armiston Street onto Parkview Lane. Okay. Uh, and uh, they, they, they still have trucks coming and going up and down Armiston Street on a daily basis that are of overweight to all the neighbors. And basically they're 
going so fast and speeding down the street that parents are afraid of their children's welfare. Okay. And then here, they take the illegal right hand and turn yeah. down a, a street that's like clearly marked that says do not enter. And the city's resolve through the traffic commission was to put more signage up on our street, which hasn't worked either. So okay. well, we're I just mean, really frustrated on this end of our, our right. town here. Again, I appreciate your concern and share, sharing your concern. It is a, it is a serious concern. Um, at this stage, I mean, that, we're at a preliminary plan stage here, so um, uh, we'll make note of your comments. Um, and then, um, does anyone else have any other comments? Oh, Mr. May, are you, are you recognizing uh, anybody else that would Ms. like to speak? Mr. Stephen Miller. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I would actually like to add one more thing, is that we were already told by the city that the city itself would not perform a structural integrity test on the street. So this would have to actually be done by the developer because the city has already said, like I said, they, they will not pay for or have that test done on the street. So that would have to be something that would be on the developer's hand so that if the street wasn't uh, able to hold the construction vehicles that they would have to do something to repair the road and prepare the street so that it could hold the construction trucks. And I'd also like to add that in the original plan for the Heritage Court and Parkview Lane, that there was an addendum that Brophy and Phillips was supposed to make repairs to Armiston Street from the destruction that they caused on my street and add in rain sewer catch basins. However, they were allowed to sell the property to the new developer who was taken over, DAT2, who has no idea that he, or I don't know, was supposed to be responsible for making repairs to the road that was done by that developer and installed rain sewer catch basins, which was never done. Okay. Well, also, can, that developer, I'm sorry, that. Less, one, more, one mm -hmm. more point. That developer was also supposed to put up a, um, a, a rain basin, uh, a rain protective barrier system that included the hay bales and the fence directly behind the properties on Armiston Street leading all the way down to 109, which again, they did not do either. So okay. my, those are my mm -hmm. concerns that I wanna have these things addressed and make sure that they're included in the plans that are going to be set forth for approval and that they're actually followed through with and that the city will be responsible to make sure that these plans are not only adhered to, but that they are completed because that didn't okay. happen. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, who else did you have, Mr. May? Mr. Stephen Miller. Yes, how you doing? Uh, I'm one of the owners of the property, and I just wanted to point out that the subdivision south of us is a 40-foot layout with 30 feet of road pavement. And, uh, and, and the street we're proposing is a very unique street. There's nothing, there's only houses on one side, and the 40 feet would, would cover everything that we need to do. And uh, it matches the, the rest of the neighborhood with the 40 feet. Thank you, sir. Uh, anybody else that you recognize, Mr. May? Uh, anybody else would like to speak? Seeing none. All right. Well, uh, okay, let's close out the, the public input, although it is not a public hearing for a preliminary plan. But um, what what is the pleasure of the board? I mean, we could have the applicant make some changes here. Uh, I'm, I'm still mindful of the comments that Pam made about giving this a a a, a an approval a, a preliminary approval to go to go to the zoning board. Pam, could you repeat your concerns again, please? You have three options. You approve it the way you see it, or it moves forward the way you see it, or you move it forward with outlining all the concerns that you have so that they're on the record or you deny it as it stands okay so in other words to so in other words if we were to if we were to conditionally approve the plan that's before us but list all of the concerns that we've shared tonight and you would draft that in the form of a, of a conditional approval letter the applicant could go forward to the zoning board Stating, well, for example, my concern is the width of the road. I mean, all of those concerns would be would be addressed in, in a conditional approval letter. Well, that the zoning board would be aware of it. Would be aware that you have 
those are your concerns. Because other than that, if you just, if they, if you just pass it the way it is, they're going to assume that. That it's okay. That you're okay with it. Plus the fact, I don't think you can go back and change it. If, if you don't outline that you have those concerns, I'm not sure that when he comes in with a definitive, because Correct. he's already given a I, preliminary approval. I think, it's, I think it's pretty clear. This, this is just a preliminary, and uh, we, we need to either approve it or deny it. And we're not going to approve it as is. We're going to approve it with recommendations or concerns. And I, that, that's right. That, that's the other option, I, I pardon the interruption, Craig, the other option is to have the applicant come back in a meeting or two with, with 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 revisions on that one that one sheet on that on, on on that one sheet he doesn't need to do a complete plan set i don't think if he's going before the zoning board to, to represent lots that are that, are, that lack frontage and area i mean that's a, that's another option too so i, I just don't want to get i just don't want to get either this board or the applicant in an untenable position or an, an, an un, unwanted position where we're, where we're, where we've bought, he, the, he or I, we have boxed ourselves into something that we don't want. I mean, I, I for example, the, 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 the width of the layout, I, I don't, I, I don't see that going forward with a 40 foot wide layout. And I'm, no, I'm sure there's other concerns on the part of the zoning board when these people get, get uh, notified by certified mail within the radius of notice. I mean, all of those all of those statements that you just heard and more are going to come out about the concerns of the intersection and everything else. So, and I, I, I completely understand and agree with the residents and the homeowners association that's there right now with their issues with construction vehicles coming down from the current project that's going on. And in order to recognize that and adjust that, adjust the, uh, 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 actually account for that. Um, I want to, I want to make a, a proposal to approve the preliminary subdivision with a recommendation that um, the the developer um, adjust the street width to comply the complete street standards and um, address the issues with the intersection with the current layout layout of Armisen Street because there because we did it we did address the intersection with the, the current layout layout of Armisen Street, the uh, I think the 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 concerns from the current residents with the current conditions of Armisen Street is not the responsibility of the current developer, but it's something that it's gonna it's it's gotta come up. It's gotta right. come up, and it'll it'll come up eventually. Yeah, we'd be aware of it, but it's certainly not the responsibility of this applicant. That's for sure. Yeah, but but it would be their responsibility to do the. the Go, ahead. Go ahead, Tony. It would be their responsibility to do the um, structural integrity test of the streets. And I'm just curious, if I may, why I heard a neighbor say they're in favor of proceeding with the 30 foot um, street requirement because another subdivision has it. I'm just well, curious to why that would be. I think the reference was that was they that live the, there. I think the reference um, Tony was that the paving width on the existing Amiston was 30. No, Councilor, uh, um, pardon me, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, that was Mr. Miller, who was, um, who is the property owner and developer, who is uh, making a comment that the, uh, what was the formerly uh, 55 uh, plus residential community to the south was laid out on a 40 foot layout, um, which was allowed under uh, zoning. We have some, since then gotten rid of the R4 zoning district. And just for clarity, wh why was it allowed? Why was it allowed under the over 50? Why was a 40 foot wide layout allowed under the, under the, under the, under the uh, over 55 community ordinance? The answer is because that if, was, it, if it was going to be a private way and it was not going to be taken by the city, it was allowed to be 40 feet. It was allowed to be 40 feet in width the, the, uh, the width of the layout with a reduced with a reduced paving width, and that's the why that's why that project is a forty foot wide way because it was never it was never intended to be an accepted street. That's why. If you if you I know I know that ordinance has been put to sleep, but if you revisit that ordinance, you'll see that the developer could have filed 
his, his, his proposal in two different fashions, either a 40 foot wide private way or 50, 50 foot wide public way. And he chose the private route. And that's why you have that, that fairly new street that's 40 feet wide. But anyway, um, that's neither here nor there, but that, that's how that, that's how Park U Lane is, that's why that's 40 feet. And if, my, if I may just add it to it, I believe we are also proposing a private way. We have no intention for this to be a public right way. Yeah. And that's, that's why we're asking for, for the reduction of the, the roadway width. Right, but if you, I mean, not to be late this, but if you, if you look on your sheet, I mean, I did spend a little time with it. If you look on, if you look on uh, sheet C4, look at your, look at your roadway cross section. You're, you're proposing a 40 foot wide way with 30 feet of, 30 feet of paving. Yes. And then you say, then you want, you've got, you've got sidewalk one side. Well, at the minimum, if you're going to go, if you, I assume you would be asking for a waiver of sidewalk on one side. We require a five foot wide sidewalk. We require a, a one and a half. I don't have the subdivision rules and regulations in front of me, but I think it's Rob or Pam. Help me. Is it a one and a half, a two foot wide grass strip? And Correct. then you got, yeah. and then you got the width of the standing granite curb, which is six inches. So <laughs> you, I think it's eight feet altogether. So it's it's a good whatever the heck it is. It's five and two is it's seven and a half feet from the property line to the face of the curb. So you'd have to to accommodate what you're trying to do in a forty foot wide way. You'd have to shift. The center line of the paving off to one side because your your graphic is incorrect. So, I mean, it's it's easier to say that you can that you can accommodate what you want to do in the forty foot wide way, but I, you'd have to make some changes to the to the to proposal that you that you've got before us to do that. But, so, anyway. and, and, and in addressing a, a just this is again this is just a preliminary subdivision. I I want to make a motion to approve on the on the with a recommendation that. Um, the streets comply with uh, complete street requirements and that the developer address the integrity of Armisen Street. Is that something that you can put in a conditional approval, Pam? When you say complete street requirement, are you talking sidewalks? You're yes. talking yeah. sidewalks? Yeah, because to, to be clear, Craig, mm -hmm. I don't believe complete streets uh, addresses the width of a way. It, it does talk it, about sidewalks. It does. And it does. It doesn't talk about the width of a way. That's up to the planning board's discretion. Does so do you want change? to add the width of the way? Does it change when it's a private way? No. It does not. No. It doesn't, okay. no, because, because so, in, theory, in theory, they could at some point, I mean, I don't They, they all become that, public at some point. Eventually, they, they, they could, they they could actually public. apply to make it public. At some point. So my other question, and I know this is preliminary, but if they're asked to make it 50 foot wide roadway. Now it's going to decrease the, 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 the lot sizes and they're trying to get, they're already technically non-conforming lots. They're going to have a, a problem when they go to zoning. So right? I suggested why not just, just increase the 50 foot way on one sheet and have that be your submittal sheet. I, I just thought that that was okay. that way there. The, the zoning board of appeals isn't giving a vote on a lot that's that, that's it's going to be reduced when it walks out the door. A lot size is it deep enough? I don't think it affects the frontage. But it's going to shouldn't be an issue then, uh, Craig. I don't know. That was my thought, but well, I, ma I made a motion. Do, well, does are we adding in the the? Are you adding in the um? Width? Yes, the width of the way. The, the width of the road conforms? Yes. A second the motion. Okay, so there's been a motion made and seconded with conditions, and I want to make sure without belaboring it too much. Pam, you've got the conditions? Um, the plan is to comply with complete streets requirements. Uh, and address the integrity of Armisen Street. Um, you're looking at us, you would like them to do a structural analysis of the integrity of Armiston Street and they're to conform with the planning board um, regulations for width or for roadway layout. Yes. Motion made. Is there a second? Tony seconded. Tony seconded. Hey, thank you. I, I missed did. That. I'm sorry. Roll call vote. Okay. Craig Pina. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. 
Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Claude Pelagi is a yes. Thank the board for its time. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Very good. All right. Um, Rachel looks so excited. What? <laughs> yeah, she says, wow, this is what I signed up for. How, how okay. many weeks on the job, Reza? Right. Three the days. Point, Third the day. Is, the good news is we only have three agenda items left. They're each about an hour and a half. No <laughs> way. No way. No, no, no way. Not. We can cut them down to an hour and a quarter. I have okay. to take a restroom. So, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. You want to say anything else? Quick, sir. Just a quick break to get a. I, I wouldn't mind. Oh yes. Let's. Do you want to take a? Yes. Three three minute break. Let's, yes, please. Thank three you. Three minute break. Three minute. Everybody, run. I will pause the uh, recording for three minutes. Mr. May. Looks like we're back in place. We're all in place, yes. All right. So the next agenda item that would be item number seven is the definitive subdivision, continued definitive subdivision property at 678 East Street. It's a two lot subdivision, or at least in Brockton. This is a subdivision that goes Brockton into East Bridgewater. The owner is Benjamin Carroll, and the um, representative is Munden Engineering. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, if, I, if I may, before we get started, uh, I did receive a call um, early this evening uh, before the meeting started from the city solicitor um, who reminded me that, um, or, or wanted to say that um, this case started out as, or, or, or what we're seeing is the result of a remand from uh, land court and the remand had some very specific language in it um, and that the current plan while they um, primarily conform to the current Brockton zoning ordinance or the subdivision regulations excuse me do not conform to the language that's in the remand and the city solicitor was hoping to be able to do some more research on that um, before the planning board made a uh, definitive decision. That's important. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, okay, so we're not, you, you're, you're not ready to discuss the, the, the major points in which uh, it, 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 it diverges from the remand then? Actually, I, I, think, I think we all got a copy of that, truth be told. I think we all got a copy of that. I think it was submitted with the original proposal in March. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Everybody has a copy of the remand, but um, what the city solicitor's concern is, is that the planning board does not have more authority than the uh, land court. And she may, uh, or, or she feels that the land court's remand language would supersede anything that the planning board would uh, potentially approve in a definitive subdivision. My understanding I, was, was the, I thought that the, I thought that, that the, that the plan that we would entertain would at the least have to meet the conditions of the remand, uh, but, 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 could, but there could be items in excess of those conditions. I, I, I am saying? not, I am not an attorney and I will okay. let. If, 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 if I could, uh, Mr. Pledge, uh, Scott Ford, uh, for the applicant, um, we did discuss this, I think, back in the over the summer, July, if you will. The original, my recollection of the procedural posture of this particular application is the applicant's original proposal did comply, at least substantially, with the court's remanded decision. And then upon application to the board, there were concerns because, for example, one of the items was our roads on the proposed subdivision had to comply to East Bridgewater standards, which were much more narrower, more rural setting than Brockton's. Um, we proposed that and Brockton um, had concerns over that. 
Um, so I think, and we, we've addressed those concerns. I think, you know, the, the board knows the application before it has fully compliant roads, for example. I'm not suggesting that's the only issue, but um, certainly one of them. Um, this remand, my understanding, just based on what the judgment says, uh, was entered um, uh, by a stipulation of the parties. So while I haven't certainly had a, any conversations with the solicitor, but it sounds like the call just came in today, um, perhaps one avenue would be to uh, go back to the court with a another uh, uh, stipulation to whatever is decided. Okay, I mean, I mean, improving on what the minimum, I mean, Im I would think logically that if the applicant is submitting a plan that's more in conformity with what the planning board wants and that's in excess of what the court remand was, that can't be a bad thing, can it? And that that can't be offensive to the court. How can it be? That's I don't know. I mean, it's yeah. Um, Especially when the agreement is by stipulation of the parties. Yeah, that, that that's what I'm saying. It's a stipulation, so you know, I, I I can't see the court taking offense to it. And when you um, say the parties, a, a vague term or a well, the parties being the parties. well in the judgment, it was. Uh, Wayne McAllister et al., Susan DeCastro, as they are members of the Brockton Planning Board as defendants, and Robert C. Carroll and Joanne Carroll as the plaintiffs, the current and former problem, you know, the property owners. Okay. That's those who were the parties as identified on the pleadings of the document. Um, City of Brockton Planning Board in its current iteration, I imagine, would have the same authority to, to amend that decision. Okay. Well, that's obviously a concern. Uh, at least the way Mr. May shared it, it's a concern that needs to be addressed. I would imagine everybody would agree with that. I, I mean, it, it sounds to me like it may be something as simple as maybe Mr. Ford meeting with a representative of the solicitor's office that's beyond our pay, pay grade. Was that the was that the suggestion, Mr. May, that that someone that the applicant yeah. met yeah, with, met with the city solicitor? Uh, yeah, I, I would think that that would be a, a a logical next step. Yeah. And would, it, would it be a possibility to propose this project, get comment on it, and potentially get a vote on this project contingent upon a, a future conversation with the solicitor? That's what I was, I was going to suggest. This will be our fourth time here. I think we've, we've made some yeah. significant improvements on this road in and, the spirit of working with this board. And, and, and to, to tack on Mr. Carroll's comment, I think that makes logical sense because then when you go back to the court, you have a plan that is agreed to. And you can simply present it to the court and say, this has been approved by the planning board. This is what all parties want. Um, please provide us with some authority to proceed on this basis as opposed to proceeding under the current judgment of remand. Yep. Which, as I could get into our presentation, I, I, I submit the plan before the board right now is a far superior plan than what the judgment of remand would, as Mr. May pointed out, probably technically allow the applicant to build as of right. So that's, I, um, I agree. So, that's, that was my thought. Well, that was, with, yeah. with, with that, Mr. Fleshy, uh, may I, may I move forward with the presentation or? Oh, please do, sir. Yeah. Okay. So the board may recall, this is a uh, proposed subdivision plan in the city of Brockton, but very uniquely also occupies uh, some uh, proposed uh, development in the city of East Bridgewater. Um, I'm sure the board remembers the, the, the various iterations the plan's gone through. At a last hearing, uh, there were some concerns the board had raised and some concerns the public had raised that we and the, and the applicant feel uh, this project before the board seeking approval tonight is, is a good one. It addresses all the concerns. Um, there were concerns of safety and this addresses those concerns because the roads um, are Brockton's required width, sidewalks on both sides. Um, it, it, it the, the, the project had a concern of um, the benefit to Brockton, um, and, and this project uh, addresses that because there is a, uh, a house lot located in the city where there was not one before, and the remaining land in Brockton is proposed, is developed land, 
as opposed to undeveloped land. So there's a potential pecuniary benefit there. And um, there was some, uh, there was an environmental concern and um, uh, uh, our engineer Gigi Munden has worked hard to provide a plan uh, to connect um, uh, the, the houses, uh, specifically as opposed as rebel, relevant to this board, the Brockton lot uh, to the city sewer, but also as we're proposing the remaining lots um, be connected uh, via sewer. Um, not the the septic system as was originally proposed. So so we think this is a this is a good plan. Um, there was a concern about uh, being able to turn around in Brockton, so we've included a cul-de-sac um, that, that 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 addresses those concerns, which is why you see the two cul-de-sacs on there. And um, and uh, I, I I think the applicant's prepared to, to ask the board to to um, to approve this plan. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Uh, any, any questions or concerns on the part of the board? Mr. Chair, I, I think um, actually this is the best plan that I've seen of this for this development. I think that I think they've, we, we've put this developer through the ringer on this and uh, they've, they've kind of gone above and beyond what we expected them to do. And, they, you know, they've, they've, they're, they've, they've, they've uh, kind of satisfied everything we asked them to do. Yes, they, they have, and I, and I would say, uh, I, I have to say I agree. Uh, it's, it's been an improvement. Uh, every iteration of it has been improved. Uh, there's, one, there's one question I have uh, that would be for, um, for Gigi, and that is, are you going with underground or overhead utilities? Underground. You're going with underground, because I don't see either on your plan view or your, or your detailed view, your, uh, uh, details for your underground utilities. Did you erroneously omit those? No, we can. Um, so it is my opinion, especially if there's no connecting streets, National Grid, gas company, electric, whatever we put there is gonna be concept. The, we, nobody can tell the gas company where to put something, I don't think. Um, well, the gas company typically puts, there's typically go in the roadway. I don't know whether it's on the which side is the typically in the roadway, but if you were going to do underground utilities such as electric and yeah. or cable, yes, uh, you'd you'd be putting them, I guess, under the sidewalk. Uh, this is my question and my concern, and and again, I I, I share this, uh, Scott, I mean, uh, Craig Pena's sentiment, the fact that you've been before us a number of times and you've been very gracious about making additions and corrections and improvements, but I, I would like to see on the plan. Because I think I think those details are very important. Uh, the location and the detail of where you're going to put the underground utilities it's extremely important. I don't know. I mean, it's I've been away from this for a while, so I don't know what the utility companies are requiring requiring for details. And I don't know if when you collect that information, maybe it's a simple thing and you'll show it under one sidewalk and you'll show that on your detail sheet. But I'm I'm respectfully requesting that you add that to one of your one of your plan views and whatever the accepted whatever the accepted detail is for Comcast or National Grid or you get the idea so that we know what the, what they require for the what they require for material for your conduit what the spacing of those have to be under, under the sidewalk I mean those are important things uh, and I think we need to show those on the plan um, that's about all that's about all I have I, I'm I'm very encouraged to see that you've got that cul-de-sac in Brockton because, you know, that's, uh, I mean, I think for reasons that we've already stated, you've made some major improvements. So that's one thing I would very much want to see on the plan is your, on the plans, plan sheet and on the detail sheet, um, acceptable details for underground utilities. Okay, those will, would be, um, we will show that on, we will depict them like the lines but they will go on where it says um, like 10 feet utility easement that extends. Um, it's like a 10, 10 foot that's off the, from that's, the- That's the, that's the that's green line on each, yeah. either side of the road. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's where they would go. The, the utility easement. So we already have all the utilities, old, not old, like municipal utilities shown on the road. And the easement is for 
um, services like cable, TV, that doesn't um, require significant structural. What um, happens? What happens in that? Um, so, and how wide is that proposed easement? Ten foot, ten feet. And what happens when when that gets when that easement gets um, crossed by either water and or sewer service? Um, they they have to get crossed by water service. I know, what, but what, who holds who holds the legal right there? As far as if you have to see the, these are the things that I want to make sure that the various departments that that are involved here. And I, I don't I I have the question, but I don't have the answer. I don't know what DPW's regulations are. I don't know what Comcast's regulations are. I don't know what National Grid's regulations are. And I certainly I'm not trying to suggest this in an attempt to belabor this. I I, I really am not. And I'm, I'm not trying to do that. I just want to get it right before we basically I want to get those details right before we approve the plan is what I'm my concern. I I I think to the water the 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 water would the property would be owned by the homeowner. The water would come through the homeowner's property. The easement uh the 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 benefactor of the easement would be the utility company and the the other homeowners at large to pass over the private owner's land. Okay. Um, I don't know that that's a level of detail that we could delineate on the plan in terms of um, you know well, no, what, that would be, what those that... easements would be. But but customarily, when you have an easement like you know you'd have you'd have the easement would say, and I'm being very general here, that the property owner's land. Um, is burdened by the easement that allows utilities to run through it to get That's to right. another land. That. that would be and 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 that would be delineated. And that would be within the ten foot wide easement. So that would be, answer your question about the location of the utilities. Would be whatever they may be. You know, right. perhaps in the future there's some technology. You know, whatever it is, whatever those utilities are. Yeah, that's and I was and I understand that the crafting of the easement document is something separate. But I wanted to see on the plan prior to to it being approved would be the depth of the the depth of these services, the location of the services, the the specifications of the conduit that they would that they would carry these. Uh, I would imagine that the power companies now would require that there be a con that these that these lines be laid in the conduit. So would a would a would a note on the plan that the easements, the utilities to be constructed to utility companies' current approved specifications be sufficient? Because you know th those can change from time to time as technologies improve and um, you know best practices evolve. Whereas if we delineate a plan on here that that utilities need to be in a particular conduit, then that creates all sorts of of problems with the the document going stale unnecessarily. Whereas I think best practices would be to simply say, the utilities will be constructed in accordance with the uh, Well, here, here's, my companies. Best, here's my best answer I can give you. If the applicant, if this plan goes approved without those details and the applicant hires a contractor, the contractor without details is going to do what all contractors do. They're gonna use the, they're gonna use the materials that they think best suit the situation. So. The, the power companies are pretty specific. And I, again, I'm sorry if, if you're getting the impression I'm belaboring this, I'm truly not. But the power companies are the ones that specify the types of pipe, the conduit that these things are supposed to be put in, the spacing, the required spacing that they're supposed to be put. I think it's appropriate if we're gonna go with an underground utility project, I think it's appropriate to have that on the plan prior to the planning board approving it. You've gotta make this visit to the City solicitor, city solicitor's office anyway to get this other uh, court remand issue addressed, which we are, are all in agreement needs to be done, and that's not going to happen in a couple of days, probably. So, I, I, that's my position. Uh, I'd like to hear what the other board members have. This this sounds like it's belaboring the issue that we we never ask other developers to do this yeah, to go I, to this I, level of detail, and I I don't I don't I don't think that's necessary. I also say um, for site site contractor for this project who's building the road, laying the sewer pipe, etc., will not and cannot do the national grid or cable or Comcast work. Comcast 
um, gas company, Algonquin, they all have their own contractors. Yes, the gas company does. The work, which are certified and educated um, to the technical um, things that they have to do to lay the infrastructure. I mean, you, you don't even have, I mean, you don't even have on your, well, you're not sure, indicating on your plan where the underground. This is a, this, to me, this is a level of detail we, we, we never require other developers to comply with. And I, I, I don't understand the need for it in this case. Well, I think it should be on there. I disagree with you with respect. Mr. Oh, utility Mr. Easement. That's why there's a utility easement. Because all the water utilities on the road, sewers on the road, um, drains on the under the pavement and utility easement for um, cable, TV, and gas. <clears throat> well, gas is going to go in That's the street. I can't design. They have to do their own. They have to design it. The for specific provider has to. Um, yeah, put so, 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 so I think just just for clarification, I think what our our, our engineer um, is is saying, who I submit has the the experience and the expertise on this point is that the, 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 our site contractor is not going to be putting in the cable. The, the, the cable company puts in the cable. The developer pays for it. So, right. So, so the cable company itself is in the last, I mean, I, I, with respect, I beg to differ. The last project I worked on that had underground utilities, the site contractor laid the conduit. The site contractor laid the conduit. They 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 laid the conduit according to a, a specification detail about depth, spacing, thickness of the conduit, and so on and so forth. And yes, to your point, the power company came along after them and laid the laid the laid that respective line. But the the details of laying the depth and the and the and the, the details that I just explained to you that was done by the contractor. Now that was a while ago because I've been out of the game for a while, and that may have changed. I don't know, Mr. May, a comment do you have on this? Uh, not on, not on um, the utilities. I th uh, honestly, I think it's to every, I, and again, I, I think it's to everybody's benefit, or if you, if you want to do something conditionally, but I think it's to everybody's benefit. The more details you have on this plan, it's human nature. The more details you have on this plan, especially with underground utilities, I think the better off everybody's going to yeah, be. I, I, I would like to propose a solution being the uh, being that the utilities will be constructed within the easement to the to the to the specifications of the utility provider. Because that addresses your concern, because then it doesn't matter who does it, it just matters is what those specifications are. Whether it's a site contractor, whether it's the developer, whether it's the utility, if it has to be at such and such a depth and such and such a type of conduit, we will do that. As you know, we 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 the the, the developer wants to do that. Um, but just to say that it has to be at such and such, a, you know, on the plan, uh, I, I think it, it makes more sense to just state that we'll do it to the required, the requirements and specifications. So we're not just, you know, deciding on our own. And anyone else with a comment or a concern? Well, I, I agree with, with that suggestion. Okay, um, let's see. Do we have anybody, do we have, Rob, do you have anybody else that's? Uh, uh, before we go and open the public hearing for testimony, I do wanna go back and, and reiterate that um, the city solicitor had uh, wanted to um, uh, research this legal question and was hoping that uh, we could continue the case. Um, I'm now going to open up, um, and um, Councillor Nicastro is joining us. Um, and Councillor, you are, uh, your mic is open. Thank you, good evening. Um, do I understand that the waivers have changed again? The waivers being requested? Yes, we changed um, a lot of things proposed. Well, so what are the, to be clear, what are the, um, either Gigi or Mr. Ford, what are the waivers that you, that you will be asking for this evening? Um, Gigi, go ahead. Yeah. One second. We are asking waivers from 
section VC to install 5C to install Cape Cod, Cape Cod berm instead of vertical granite curbing, and section 4B2D to allow not to round property lines at the intersect to provide 30 foot radius, provided payment to payment radius, not lot lines, is 30 feet at the south corner and 33 on the north corner of the intersection of proposed Knights Way and existing public road, East Street. So that was the extent of your, your the waivers that you'll be requesting? Yeah. Um, can you explain that second one about uh, round property lines? I don't quite understand it. Um, so we were, it, so we were let known that Rob May told us the um, rules and regulations. Um, it is stated in a way that the lot lines has to be rounded instead of payment to payment um, radius. Right. And that is what we're asking a waiver for. So we're asking that the, 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 the radius remains the required 30. It's just it's a technical waiver that it be pavement to pavement, not lot line to lot line. The important concern is the safety concern with the 30 degree radius, and we still meet that. I'm sorry, how do you meet it? Because it's 30 degrees. But doesn't it, don't we require it lot line to lot line? Yes, which is why we're asking for a waiver. Okay, this particular requirement, as has been discussed before over the years, is very important because East Street, it has quite a bit of traffic on it. It is transitioning from being a country road. A lot of people use it as a cut through from the south side to the east side of Brockton. And um, there has to be adequate radii for cars to edge out and have a look. In that, in that, in that, in that radius that you're speaking about would be, would be the, the, the minimum radius, the minimum radius at the property line, which they can't meet, which is 30 feet plus the width of a sidewalk, which is five feet, plus the grass strip, which is, I think it's, I don't have the, I don't have the cross section in front of me, I think it's two and a half feet, plus the width of the curbing. So long story short, if you've got a, if you've got a paving, if you've got a paving radius where this new road meets the meets East Street at about 37 feet, then, then you've, then you've provided a radius that meets your safety. That, that meets the safety concerns, Attorney uh, McCastro. That's because but, if you had, and let me just finish my explanation. Please. If you if you were going from sidewalk to sidewalk, then you would need the integrity of the thirty foot wide radius at the property line because you would need that that radius at the sidewalk so that you could have continuity with the sidewalk from the new road to the existing road. But there isn't a hope or a prayer that East Street's ever gonna have sidewalks. So we're trying to meet something that's never gonna happen. What is of great importance, in my opinion, and I'm just one member on the board, is that if, you, if, there, if the applicant is able to meet the turning radius at the edge of paving of about 37 foot radius, that's, that's of great import, as you just suggested. That's where the, that's where the traffic from this road meets East Street with a, with a 37 foot radius. And how did I again? I just how did I arrive at the 37 feet? It's a minimum 30 feet plus the width of a width of a sidewalk plus the width of the grass strip plus the thickness of the granite curb, and that comes up to 36 and a half or 37 feet. So that means that the sidewalks on this private way stop short of East Street. Well, even, yes, because there's no sidewalks to, to to connect them to. Well, where are they going to connect to? Unless there's, some grand, unless there's some grand proposal on East Street to to install sidewalks, then then that would be then that would be a dilemma. I mean, you'd have to put a. I guess at that point, you'd have to put 
because well, because those those sense. property lines those property lines meet those ninety degree property lines meet meet East Street at ninety degrees. There is no there is no radii there. Well, actually, I have been asked repeatedly to install sidewalks on East Street, and I have asked the DPW commissioner for quotes on it. So, um, and especially in this stretch of East Street, because there are more uh, houses along it, it is more improved with residential dwellings. Um, so I'm not sure that's true, that there would never be sidewalks. Hello? Yes, no, I'm, I'm, I'm contemplating your comment. Um, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, I've never picked up on the indication that there, that, that there's proposed sidewalks on East Street. Um, I, I, I suppose anything's possible, but. Well, it's, it's more than possible, but because I've been asked for it and it's a lot of money, but you know, uh, one idea is to put them in the areas where that are more settled. And um, I have obtained quotes from Larry Rowley about it. Yeah. So that that's one thing that I kind of don't agree with. Um, and the other thing is I did, I did hear from the city solicitor regarding the uh, remand judgment and um it specifically says um that lot nine would not be a pr it, it specifically requires that a restriction that lot nine not be um improved with a residential dwelling after the building that's on it is torn down and um yeah. and i don't see and the plan that you've got in front of you tonight has a, a has a dwelling being placed on that area and so um it looks like you're not complying with the the remand of the court the judgment of remand well we, counselor uh, is it is it your understanding that the that that remand prohibits a house from being on that block yes yes it specifically says and i quote affirmatively and as matter of record Lot nine be restricted as an unbuildable residential lot. Yeah, if, 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 if I may address that point, Attorney Nicastro, um, at the last hearing, I, I, if, if it wasn't you, one of your constituents questioned the benefit of this project to Brockton and there was discussion about uh, uh, including a house lot in the city of Brockton and we, the applicant said they would entertain that idea and they went back and they spent a lot of time and money to redo these plans to include a house lot in Brockton. Um, so that was done specifically. Our understanding was that at, at, at the request of residents of the city and, and, and the board and so forth. Um, so that's why that's there. So, so when we discuss it with the city of solicitor, that would obviously be a condition of, of, of our proposal to the court. It just seems to me you can't approve a plan that violates uh, a judgment of the land court overtly. So, well, that, can that's I, it. Yeah, yeah, can I concur? I, I want to concur with Mr. Ford here. The, at the last hearing, it was determined that that was, this, that was an agreement between the city and the developer. And the, the residents said they would have preferred uh, a residential unit there. Which I was surprised about, but uh, the the residents themselves said they would prefer a residential unit there. We can't we can't keep allowing this to go back and forth and and delaying this and dragging this on either way. Well, good for you, Craig. But however, I'm a real estate lawyer, and so is your applicant, and so is your applicant's attorney, and we all know the significance of a, a judgment of a court. I mean, we we, we, we I, do, and, 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 I, and I would respectfully submit that, that the board approving it with the understanding in the open that we're going to go back to the court and say the parties to this 
dispute, we'll call it, at, a one, at one point in time. I don't believe it is that today. But at one point in time, there was a dispute, clearly, because it went to court. The parties to that dispute have reached a resolution, and we're asking the court to modify the judgment that we originally asked them to implement. And, so and just to close the loop on that, on, on the point, this decision today allows us to build a road to connect to East Street to East Bridgewater standards, which is far less safe uh, than, than, than the road that we're proposing, which is perfectly safe within the city of Brockton. So if the city wants us to scrap these efforts and just simply rest on our rights contained within this remand, the applicant could do that. We don't want to do that. But, but you can threaten all you want. Position. You don't want to do that because you want a public way on the stretch of land that, re that goes from the East Bridgewater border to East Street. I'm well aware of that. So y you make it sound like a threat, but it's really not. No, it's not a, it's, it's, because you have bigger things to lose Mr. and you're Mr. not Chairman, sure you're going to get Mr. that Chairman, now. Could you get a hold of this meeting, please? Yeah, all right. Um, okay. Um, did, did you want to? Did you want to make any other points, Councillor? I, I don't think this, this can be approved. Um, you know, but... Well, there's, there's already been, I think Mr. May has read into the record, a recommendation from one of the city solicitors that it be, that that, that that issue be addressed. I'm not a lawyer. None of us on the board are lawyers. I mean, there are a couple of things hanging here, and I think they're there are a couple of things hanging here that I think need to be cleaned and cleared up. Anytime you do, my experience has been, anytime you do these intermunicipal projects, uh, intermunicipal projects, they come with various challenges and things like that. So um, I think that probably lends to the reason why this has taken an extra couple of meetings, but um, I think it's all for a good purpose. And I think that there's a couple of things hanging in the wind here that need to be addressed. And I, I, if they can be addressed, I think if this was to continue for one more month, um, we're going out of the building season anyway. I don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, I think there's some things of great import here. And there must be a reason why the city solicitor said that this, they wanted this to be addressed. Uh, there's a couple of attorneys on this meeting, on this call right this evening that can't seem to come into a common agreement with it. So. I know none of us are, are on this board are attorneys, and I, I, I'd like to think that these things could be buttoned up and within the next meeting frame. But uh, I, 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 Mr. Blaze, I, I, I think the the applicant could. I think we could move forward to a vote with 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 those concerns addressed wholly adequately adequately with conditions. I see no functional difference between moving forward on a condi on a, on the condition that that it be. Uh, approved by the city solicitor and 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 and, and um or, or not approved by the city solicitor but but approved by the court that the judgment of remand be amended to reflect the plan i think we can address that concern i think that would be that would be appropriate and also um that the easements the concern you raised be addressed uh, you know constructed to utility standards I you you um, last appeared in front of this board a few months ago. You had plenty of time to go to uh, approach the city solicitor about it or someone in the law department. Um, I point that out only because um, this is a judgment of the land court and it's specifically on point to this lot of land. If, if you know, if you know, attorney, uh, Nicastro, is it would would this issue be resolved with the applicant going to the Brockton City Solicitor, or would the applicant have to go back to the court? Well, I I couldn't say. There is language in the remand about returning to the court on something, but um, um, you know, I'm 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 not here in the position of a lawyer. I'm here in the position of a, of a counselor who's I'm, going to be stuck with whatever happens here for many years to come. Um, Mr. May, do you have any suggestions on appropriate contingencies? We can help the applicant and also meet um, the counselor's concerns. Um, I, I did 
state at the very beginning and a couple of times that the city attorney would like to do some research on this and she's requesting that we continue it until she has a chance to deal with that. I think that's, I think continuing isn't conditionally approving folks. Continuing is not the same thing as conditionally approving. So right. if, if someone's asked for, if the city solicitor of Brockton, in addition to the concerns that Nicast, uh, attorney Nicasco has raised, if they, if they wanna see these things resolved, I think that they that they're of enough of an import that they need to be resolved. That's not. I don't think that that's reflective of the board trying to drag this thing on. I mean, I think those things are important. They need to be resolved. So, if I think we can continue. I think I think all the parties are understanding the issues that we've discussed tonight that aren't that many, and then we could maybe we we can we can wrap this up at another meeting or something. But those those issues are. I think of importance. Just for clarity, the issue, the continuance would be to resolve the issues of charting a path forward uh, with the city solicitor's office to um, address in some way, shape, or form uh, an amendment to the judgment of remand from the land court as an right, issue that's, one. And that's assuming that the city solicitor has that authority. I don't know that. I don't know that. And two, detail on the utility, on the construction of utilities in the easement. Yep, I thought that was, honestly, I thought that that was for everybody's benefit to get clear the, the details of, of, a, of a installing underground utilities, but. Other than those two issues, are there any other issues that we'd have to address coming back? Anyone, Just board members, Mr. May, uh, Pam? I just want to say something on the expectation of what um, national grid or cable um, details will look like. We will show the location and even if I will contact the gas company and national grid to get some feedback from them. And but Comcast, in, and so Comcast as well, please. It will be concept and like the trench details, other um, construction details we show for the road and the drain pipes. I can't provide that. I don't work for Comcast. I'm not authorized to design those for them. No, no, they, I'm going to guess. I mean, the last, again, it's been a while since I've worked on one, but they have boilerplate detail pages, Gigi, that they give you for depths and offsets and and, and, and the specifications of the PVC pipe that they want you to, that they want you to install. I mean, I, again, I've been away from it, so I apologize. I don't have the details either, but anything that you can research is more than we have in front of us now. Um, research as in getting as in, the as, in the, as in the acceptable details to the utility company and also to the city of Brockton, I guess. I think so we can do that. Outside the way, yeah. It's going to be outside the way. So. Mr. Pleasure, we will absolutely provide that information. Yep. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to continue? Mr. Chair? Yes. I am not sure how many days we are on this project, but um, they have... They've run out of time? Graciously extended every month and frozen the time period. Okay, Mr. Carroll, would you be so kind as to ask for continuance? Uh, absolutely. Okay, for how many, how long, Mr. How long would you want, Pam? Um, that, what, what well, the length of time is up to them. It's, it's the freezing of the time period for approval because they are probably close to that, if not over it. Uh, I, oh, it's 60 I, days. I think date certain to the next uh, December meeting. But if, if they ask, doesn't it give them a little insurance? I'm not saying it's going to take that long, but they, if they were to ask for 60 days, isn't that to their benefit? If you continue, but if you continue to the date certain and they're 60 days out, they can't come back 30 days. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, what, what do you recommend? So, it, it, like I said, it's up to them if they think they can. I'm re recommending December, and if they if it gets yeah, we'll, screwed we'll, up, we continue it again to January. Okay, all right, that works for That's us. So long. I'm sorry. I just said that works for us. Yeah, very good. So there's a motion. There's a motion been made to continue the project. We've shared our concerns and our and our thoughts on the thing. There's a motion been made to continue to the December meeting. 
Who made Who a made motion? motion? I'm sorry? Who made the motion? The applicant. Well, no, that's <laughs> not a motion. I am sorry. <laughs> Did the applicant request to continue? <laughs> okay, it's, getting, it's late. <laughs> it's getting late. Oh, God. Now, okay, so the applicant is, is, is requested a continuation of the definitive subdivision. And uh, I guess if everybody's in agreement with that, then we will. Attorney Ford, can you get me an email just freezing the time clock? I will. Till the December meeting? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate your patience. Of course. We want to get this project done, but we want to get it done right. Thank you, sir. All right. I believe we're, we're going to move on, then I guess we're all set on that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. All right, so you still see. have two more. What? You still have two more. <laughs> yeah, but they're going to be quick, an hour and a half a piece. Okay, so okay, number eight, definitive subdivision properties at 135 Elliott Street. It's a three lot subdivision, uh, JK Holmgren Engineering. Maybe we can make this one really quick because I, I'm, I know we've got concerns about this that. Um, is Mr. Fair? There he is. I knew he'd be back. Are you are you on audio and video, Mr. Mr. Farrier? Not yet. He's muted. He, now yeah. he is. There we go. I All fell right. asleep for a while. Sorry. He All doesn't right. have his daughter there to help him. <laughs> yeah. All right. So for the record, a definitive. Let him know you said that. One thirty-five Elliott Street, the three-lot uh, residential subdivision, <clears throat> represented with J.K. Holmgren. Good evening, Scott. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Again, uh, hopefully I'll be fast here. We've got a definitive subdivision of a piece of property at 135 Elliott. We're before you folks uh, back in the summer, I believe maybe July, uh, for a preliminary subdivision, basically uh, hoping for permission to get ahead to the ZBA so they could look at the property. Uh, we went to the ZBA and at their September meeting, they granted a variance uh, to allow the division of the property as shown on your plan. So uh, it's a little bit of a unique situation. 135 Elliott Street has kind of a large uh, industrial building on it, uh, parking area in front of the building. And uh, the back of the property is zoned uh, industrial. The front of the property is zoned residential as is uh, pretty much most of the properties on Elliott Street. So we're hoping to uh, build two three-family homes on uh, the properties that we've divided, lots A and B, and then leave the industrial building along with its parking uh, on lot A, uh, sorry, on lot C. Uh, in order to do that, we know we've still got a few hurdles to jump over. We need to go to tech review, uh, we need site plan approval, and we need conservation approval. So uh, this definitive subdivision was just uh, another duck to, to knock off the row here. So it's uh, kind of a long process, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Now, I'm just curious, I mean, wouldn't, aren't you doing things a little bit out of order? If you've got to go to check review, then site plan approval. And if you've got some environmental issues there, you've got wetlands, you've got a floodplain. Um, I mean, we have, the board has some, some serious concerns here. Um, those are some of them. I, I think that I mean, I'll let the other, obviously the other board members will share their thoughts and concerns, but it would seem to me that, that be given the potential impact of what the Conservation Commission may have for issues that were a little out of order here, wouldn't you be best off to file with CONCOM, Scott? I, I suppose, well, maybe, Mr. Chairman. I, I, think, I think if we have any significant changes with conservation, we're going to get kicked back before the Board of Appeals anyways. Uh, so, I mean, somebody's, somebody's got to go first. Uh, you know, I, I certainly know what you're saying where we typically look at these plans as more of a, a souped up A and I plan, basically just dividing the property and not, uh, getting really deep into the engineering pot. 
of the you know of the subdivisions where they're on existing roads certainly this one's a little bit different uh i mean having said that it, as i said we we know it's a long road you know if if you'd rather we certainly don't have a an issue uh giving it a, a lengthy continuance mr chairman uh, did you say did you say that you you've already gone to the zoning board yes and did you did you at the least did you file at least file an anrad with concom no so you you haven't even locked in the wetlands lines or the other of the of the, the definitive definitive floodplain then well the floodplain is uh has a given elevation so we know we're locked in with the floodplain okay is it is it it's an elevated it's an elevated floodplain that's correct Well, I mean, you, but, I mean, here you are, you're asking for, it's not a preliminary, you're asking for a, de a definitive subdivision. And honestly, with, with, with respect, I think you're out of order here. I mean, you're out of, out of rotation as far as- Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, with respect that this is a, this, I mean, this is a definitive subdivision and there's a, there's a public hearing, but I would, I would be more apt to continue this as uh, Mr. Perry suggested until it goes to Concom. Yeah. Yep. I have, would have to agree. Uh, any other board members have any comments? It's covered. I'm sorry? It's, you, you've all covered it. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mr. May, it's a public hearing. Uh, do we have anybody? Uh, They've I all gone. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that exciting to hang around for three and a half hours. <laughs> um, okay. Um, very good. Well, I think, I mean, those, if you want to, if you want to, um, get in touch with the, the planning department, uh, Scott, they may, they may be able to share with you some, some things in greater detail, whatever concerns they may have, but, um, those were the major ones. Uh, and I, I think we, that if you do, which, what is your preference? We would do, I mean, Rather than to deny, I suppose the most efficient thing is to continue it. So, um, I mean, how about if we say March, Mr. Chairman? Is that too far out? Well, I mean, what is the time clock on this one, Pam? Did this just get submitted? He's got a preliminary, so your time clock is slower, so he has to freeze it through March. Well, he, his plan says definitive subdivision. Correct, but he's already had a preliminary. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So that gives him, yes, that gives him. Motion to continue till March. Second. Okay, so there's been a motion made and seconded to continue to March. Uh, With the agreement that they freeze the time clock? Yes. March. Yeah. Okay, roll call vote. Craig Pina? Yes. Uh, Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Bob Pelagi Zia? See that? That was quick. It was. Craig, can up oh, here, Craig. Blah, blah. Scott, can you send me just an email? I will. Asking for the continuance to March and freezing the time clock for approval. Yeah, Certainly I'll send you an email for that, Ben. Not, not a problem. Yeah, I, you know, at this point of the night, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it from you, too. <laughs> One more. One All more. right, who's up okay. next? Scott. Scott. Here again. <laughs> on Union Street. Right, so definitive subdivision properties at 135 Elliott Street. It's a three lot subdivision. Uh, we just did that one. Yeah, no, nope. we did that one. one. Next one. It's what? Union Street. We're on to 21 Union. Oh, Mike, should I jump one? Number yep. nine. Yeah, number, what did I just say? Elliott? Yeah. yeah. Okay, properties at one, is a 21 Elliott uh, Union Street. <laughs> Uh, so two lots. We're on Union Street. Yep, Union Street. Take it away, Mr. Perry. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, uh, actually, I've uh, got several pages of questions. If I can share my screen. Uh, no, I'm just several kidding. Several pages. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, Thanks. Uh, this one's certainly a lot easier, Mr. Chairman. 21 Union Street. Again, we had a preliminary before you folks in the summertime uh, for permission basically to go to ZBA. Uh, property is owned R3. Uh, Mr. Montero, the owner of the property, it's his, basically his side yard. He was looking for a variance to allow for the construction of a two-family home uh, within that side yard area. 
the Board of Appeals granted the variance back in September. And uh, that's the plan that's before you today, dividing it up into two lots, lots A and B, both of them at about 6,500 square feet apiece. You, Scott? Yes. I, I know, I know, the, I, I know the lateness of the, the evening, um, but I'm just curious, and I know you've been before zoning, but lot A, you got you got an existing three family. Yes. So where is your parking on lot A? Uh, all, basically all the way up the driveway, Mr. Chairman. They have a two car garage, and then uh, about a ninety foot long driveway. Okay, so if I'm okay, if I'm if I'm nosed in up against the garage, and it's a cold winter night, and I got to go out and get a gallon of milk, what do I do? Walk. All right, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> No, I, I think you would uh, do Mr. May's tandem parking and borrow somebody else's keys and take their car. Or you take the last car? You would. Everybody okay. shares the keys in that house. Now, this when this went before the zoning board, did you actually split this, or did, or did Attorney Nezzarella establish the fact that these two were two existing lots of record? That's a big difference. Can I, can I speak on this? Uh, we, we, we've dealt with a lot of these lots across the city recently. Um, when, when the city was rezoned in 1967, a lot of these lots that were side by side were um, just unified as one lot right. with, if they were with a common owner. We're seeing a lot of these coming up recently where they had common ownership, but they always understood that there were separate lots. And now we're seeing these come up and they're trying to separate these lots and we have to address the, all these individual. So these, these were, so my question was, you didn't just create these lots. Did Attorney Nesrello establish before the zoning board that these were existing lots of record? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's, yes. the, that's, the, that's the whole reason why you, that driveway lives the way it right. is. Because, it, because you weren't creating two lots. That's an existing lot. Right. Okay. And then on your, the other one on lot B, you got a similar situation for pot. No, you got two driveways. Two driveways on either side. Okay. Does anybody else have any comments, concerns? Uh, Mr. Mayor, do we have anybody in the pipeline there that wishes to speak? Is the public? Oh, here? everybody's gone home, Bob. Everybody's <laughs> gone to sleep. I knew that. All right. Um, Everyone was up too late last night. That's the truth. Yeah. Well, are you asking for any waivers, sir? Uh, the typical waivers that we've been asking for, Mr. Chairman, the utilities. Uh, Which of the way? Uh, no, no profile. I know no, no uh, cross section. All of that. Exactly. I knew you'd say that. Motion to approve. Uh, Wait a minute. Could you minute. submit those for us, please? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks. He's got some waivers on the plan. Um, were there anything other issues before we move to? Uh, I guess I guess we're good to go. But then we got to talk about surety and, and that stuff. But uh, okay. So was there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. A second. Thank All in favor? Wait a minute. Good night, guys. Thank you. Wait, Wait a minute. Minute. Oh, Damn it. Jump in the gun there, Scott. <laughs> you might as well put them on the covenant. It's no yes. Okay. Yes. So we need a roll call vote. Craig Pina. Yes. Tony Gazelle. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Compelagi is a yes. Now we need to move on to uh, a form of surety. It's going to be covenant. It's going to be a covenant. Yep. All right. Uh, are there any other issues? Um, I will need you to come in on Monday or Tuesday to sign the lot releases that you voted on. Wonderful. How many signatures do you need on lot releases? I need two, and you guys can pick who the two are. Man. But there's <laughs> two to show up. <laughs> well, I get one that shows up really well. <laughs> you notice? You notice how I hang back? I kind of hang back and. I do. Work. It never works. Good day, Pam. I need somebody besides Larry. <laughs> Hello. I've signed the last two. You did. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But Larry, I, will, I will do my best. Larry, my best. Larry, when you go in, sign twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that it? Are we done? How much fun can we have in one night? Rachel, Rachel had a blast. So yeah. Well, it was a good night. Thank welcome, you. Welcome, Rachel. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, welcome. All right, is there, uh, let's see, we don't need a motion. We have to close it out. Uh, close no. meeting to adjourn. Vote to adjourn. Well, 
All motion right. to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. That's it. You don't need a vote on that one. Have no. a good all. Good night. Good night. Good night. night. night.